Hello, hello everyone. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good uh, maybe early morning uh, to you, um, depending on where you might be joining uh, from the globe today. Uh, it's lovely to be here. Of course, on Wednesdays, we deal with um, Islam and Indian religions. Um, we have the other worldviews covered on different other days, more details scrolling through the bottom of the screen at the moment. It's um, lovely to be here. Um, I'm struggling struggling a little bit because my view has changed a little bit uh, in my monitor. Please bear with me if I, if I come across a little bit different from uh, normal. Uh, Sister Grace, uh, Sister Cherokee, and everyone else who have joined. Brother Darren, of course, is with us on the panel here. Sebastian Tuscanon, um, lovely to see you. Uh, first time, uh, Brother Matriso Pena, lovely to see you. Um, so it's uh, it's really lovely to be here today. Really excited. We have invited um, um, Nader, who you might uh, remember, who joined us uh, uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago or so now. I've asked him to join indirectly through his friend uh chris let's see if he joins but other than that of course uh, syed might join and um, maybe someone else really excited to present uh, god's truth uh, for those who are not um who, who don't know about us from before we are bible believing christians and we want to defend the biblical worldview and we want to critically scrutinize every other worldview in this regard of course islam and other indian uh, and indian religions so let's get started with a brief word of uh, prayer brothers um, could one of you please uh, pray for us um, before we move on to anything else heavenly father we thank you so much that we can be in your presence tonight we thank Lord. you so much that you love us and that your thoughts towards us are uncountable. This is an astonishing thing, Lord. Uh, you even say that you store up our tears in a bottle, and you've heard all our prayers, and they're stored up, uh, ready to answer in full and to explain when we get to heaven, Lord. This is, this is a fantastic thing that you love us, Lord, that you are so mighty and so glorious in your Shekinah that you would even care about us, Lord. But you knew about us, you uh, know where we're going, you know what we're going to do, and we just want to praise your name. We trust in you, Lord, no matter what is coming in the future, that we can rely on you, because we know where you're taking us. And we are bound for Zion, Lord. We are on the way. So that is a fantastic thing to know. I pray for people that are going to tune in tonight, people maybe from Islam, maybe some Hindus, maybe... Um, the the gentleman that was a Jainist. Uh, we pray for these people, Lord. We pray that uh, we can have a lovely conversation tonight, and we pray that we can glorify your name, and that our consciences will be uh, pricked, and we can pray for the, the people that don't know you, Lord, uh, to be introduced to you tonight. Help us to do that, Lord, please, we pray. Help us to lift up the name of Jesus. Help us to um, uh, show the power that is in the gospel, Lord, we pray. Thank you for your love. Help us to love one another. Help us to be patient with people on the chat. Help us just to love even the, the trolls that might join and um, insult and ad hominem. Help us to love them, Lord. Help us to show patience tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, wonderful, Brother Greg. We need that prayer, don't we, very much. Uh, to be patient. Um, so I'm, I'm um, reminded of the number of people who have joined us over the last few months. I'd really like to you know, call them out by name, just in case maybe one of them is watching at the moment and might be you know, encouraged to join us or you know, they may see the video later on. Um, so, but let me, let me do this. So, let me, if I, if I miss anyone, I, particularly, you know, in relation to Islam and Indian religions, I'm trying to remember. So we have Sati, who is a Sri Lankan 
um, uh, Tamil Hindu um, who joined us. He, he, he was based. He is based in London. Who joined us a while ago. Sati, if you're watching us, it'll be lovely to catch up with you to see how you are doing and what uh, you have done with uh, our discussion. You know, in the week that we had our discussion a while ago. Now, uh, we didn't receive an email from you. Uh, we were really excited, eagerly looking forward to email. But um, if you're watching or if you watch the video recording later, please email us. So that's uh, Sati. Uh, I'm, I'm also reminded of uh, um, the Jain gentleman, uh, the sort of the Jain atheist. I forget his name, Rushi or maybe Rushi, who also, I think, joined us from somewhere in the UK uh, or Canada. I can't remember. But um, if you watch, if you are watching us or if you watch us later, please, could I could I please uh, uh, request you to also follow up? Of course, we want you to make sense. Last time we were struggling to uh, engage with you properly. But um, if you can, um, there'll be. Uh, if you if you can, it'll be lovely to have you uh, back here. Um, so him, um, the who else joined? Of course, uh, for, you know, Muslims. We have Syed who joined us from India. We have Nader who joined us um, from a place I leave um, unnamed. Uh, Nader with his uh, friend Chris. If you're watching, if please do join us. We uh, gave you the challenge last week as to how Islam could be an Abrahamic religion. So if you are watching us, uh, please, you are most welcome to join us uh, live. Of course, Aladdin, if you're watching us, please don't join us live because, <laughs> because you have been extremely... I don't even want to use the word rude because you, you weren't rude. I think you breached all limits of um, 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 good behavior. Um, so we don't welcome you to join us live, but please watch us and, um, and uh, please uh, try and uh, follow what we're saying and engage mentally, you know, um, mentally engaged with the points we're making so those are the people that i remember uh, brothers do you remember anyone else uh, from these worldviews no who joined us uh, before okay that's fine there were of course a number of other comments that uh, were there um um in our channel you know over the period over, over the few years and so on if any one of you is a muslim you're most welcome to join I do realize, you know, even last week there was a, a lady, Aima, I think uh, the name. Yeah. We thought we thought uh, it might be a, a Muslim, but I remember actually she was on another stream later. I can't remember which one. And she seemed to come across as a Christian. So uh, what kind of Christian or, you know, not sure, uh, a real Christian or some sort of a um, unbiblical sort of version. Not sure, but uh, that was her. And um, yeah. If you are if you are following any of these world religions, there was a uh, there was another person, Camden Guru, I think the name from last week or a couple of weeks ago, Camden Guru, who could be a Hindu, not sure. You know, the Guru 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 is a word that you know we use in English also these days. So I'm not I'm really not sure. But um, yeah, if you are a Muslim who is watching us live. Please, you're welcome to join us. We will present a precise challenge for you to engage with. It'll be lovely to see um, what kind of meaningful conversation we could have today. Before, before I, I jump on to anything else, I'd really want to say I'm really hoping and praying and working towards, uh, you know, beginning this uh, sort of series, uh, sort of a vlog, vlog-like series, not, not exactly vlog, you know but a vlog like series um, in relation to the book that I'm attempting to write. And I'm hoping that, you know, partly that could also encourage me to uh, be disciplined to write uh, to in, in my writing um, that book uh, essentially on the history of Islam as how the Quran presents it. 
I'm looking forward to maybe beginning to make videos on that. Maybe if not tomorrow, the day after, hopefully through God says, if you could please keep me in prayer in relation to that. Also preparing um, on the preparing on a couple of other sort of similar things. We want to expand on the offering um, in relation to Islam. You know, many making many short videos, 20 minute videos, educational videos on um, you know the various uh, defense arguments presented and uh, and um, also offense arguments they have launched against uh, christianity so th th those those are sort of you know uh, quick announcements brothers how are we doing uh, how is everyone fine thank you um thank you. Arul, i'm not going to be able to stay for long tonight would you mind yeah. if i just shared just um, just some brief scriptures um, no problem before we start is that okay yeah, yeah absolutely uh, let, let me let me uh, I, I need to move my uh, desk a little bit you know the, the screen is a little bit funny so I'll, I'll uh, stop my cam briefly but I'm listening please go on okay so um, the the first scripture is from Psalm 80 which says a return we beseech you O God of hosts look down from heaven and see and visit the vine and vineyard which your right hand is planted and the branch that you made strong for yourself um, so this branch is uh, mentioned in jeremiah 23 5 33 15 isaiah 11 1 isaiah 4 2 zechariah 3 8 zechariah 6 12. so when the the muslim people watching this the rabbinic jews watching this um when you want to know about Jesus in the Old Testament, please read these Psalms. Um, in verse 17, it says, let your, right, let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Um, looking down from heaven, this is. You know. uh, Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. Um, that's what happened. Jesus' face shone, Matthew 17, verse 2. And then, um, Arise of God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit the nations. Muslims, how does God inherit the nations? Arise of God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit the nations. This is a promise made to Jesus. How can God inherit the nations? Um, in, when you inherit something, you, you get it as a, a possession. How can God get as a possession the nations if he created them and he made them and he's sovereign? Um, and the, the, that is from Psalm 82. And then I'll finish with the last one from Psalm 89, uh, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 89, verse 3 and 4. I've made a covenant with my chosen I have sworn to my servant David, your seed I will establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. Thank you. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, lovely to hear that, of course, the branch, the branch of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lovely to also of course uh, understand that god has a plan and a future for the nation of israel uh, especially mm -hmm. and of course um, for the what is called the commonwealth of israel for all nations in the world uh, but with him ruling from jerusalem um it's it's uh, very interesting you know because i was watching this video uh, of the interview that um, uh, this gentleman uh, abdullah andulasi andulasi or something the uh, muslim debate initiative uh, guy interviewed by Nigel uh, Farage for GB News uh, in the UK and he asks a very basic question initially it was a very short interview I think 10 minutes or something and he asked this question uh, do you believe in the right of Israel to exist and uh, this gentleman you know in his uh, what 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 he thinks is this uh, uttermost intelligence and wisdom he says nope we do, I don't believe in uh, the right for nations to exist I believe in the right for individuals to exist not the nations of course he goes against the entire islam in saying that because islam doesn't believe in the right of non-muslims to exist uh, in um, 
but uh, beyond that he goes against the bible when he says um, that he doesn't believe in nation states having a right to exist which goes against the bible god of the bible has set boundaries for nations and allowed people to thrive within those boundaries you know in the hope that they would grow up and find him um so this is god of the bible and uh, lovely to hear that um, of course that god of the bible has a plan and future for the nation of israel going into eternity too so it's it's that's that's very very lovely um brother greg that you read that um now okay so let's let's get to uh, brothers other brothers how are you how are you? I, i know brother greg you need to leave soon as a matter of fact i i um, if you don't leave soon we'll be kicking you out soon because <laughs> you need to get some rest everyone uh, should get some rest i know brother ray said he wasn't feeling great brother ray if you want to get some rest also please don't please don't uh, um uh, mind actually jumping off the uh, stream at all um one of the things i am really trying to uh, trying to uh, do is you know in in what we are doing in operation steven for for people not to be burnt out so uh, maybe the recommendation would be maybe two streams a week or something so um, it'll be lovely if people aren't burnt out especially ray is looking forward to his great date uh, the uh, the day uh, what is that thing called d day how, how do you call it the um his wedding day coming up uh, rather soon i don't want to give the dates personal details out but uh, uh ray if you want to get some rest please you need to get some rest before we check you out <laughs> please uh but uh, brother darren uh, brother ray brother sai how are you guys, how are you all doing yeah by the grace of god i'm good i give god thanks uh yeah what more is there to say really uh his love and his mercy endure and they are new every morning um yeah I give god thanks it's of course uh easter week and um you know god is always doing tremendous things even in the face of um all world affairs he's he's continuously working in the hearts of mankind to bring them uh into full repentance into you know um the straight and narrow with him uh i continue to see that it it can be so easy with everything that's going on um to to lose sight of that sometimes but um you know the lord says that we are to take faith in him uh, be of co- of good cheer because he's overcome the world and um you know i'm looking forward to even this this passover this this easter just getting out being able to share the gospel um and yeah we should we should just be so appreciate appreciative of that fact that it is that this time of of year it's a time for Christians really to get excited about exuberant you know the yep. state of the world was hung up on a cross for us um beaten battered battered bruised and um you know that was something that was um foretold uh from from time of memorial from Adam sinned uh straight away i'm um, just to to give a couple of verses uh, in relation to that and i think we had the gentleman last week asking about you know an abrahamic faith but for me this is this is what a real abrahamic faith is it was revealed in progressive revelation from the proto uh, evangelium uh, genesis 3 verse 15 uh, where the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent but we could read um that genesis sorry that galatians 3 verse 7 says this therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of abraham and i read on a little bit more verse 8 in the scripture foreseeing that god would justify the gentiles non-jews by faith preached the gospel to abraham beforehand saying in you shall all the nations be blessed okay we also read that in genesis chapter 12 verse 3 So then those who are of faith are blessed with belief in Abraham. But then we get to the culmination of that really when we read verse 14 we read that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. And he's redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's what um you know when somebody says well uh, you know that gentleman respectfully about uh circumcision 
you know, being part of an Abrahamic faith. Now, the Abrahamic faith is completed in Genesis. Well, it starts at Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. We find the culmination of it in, in Galatians chapter 3, wrapped up very nicely for us. And, um, you know, we find we're not, we're not justified by the law. Um, Leviticus 17, verse 11, without the shedding of blood, you know, there's no atonement. It's the blood that maketh atonement for the soul and um that's what we look forward to at this passover it's also a reason as well with that um you know with those precepts really as to why the whole world can be mad at israel and not really know because it's a foundation there are promises there and um, the ultimate promise obviously is through the high priest jesus and um he's gone into the holy of holies for us and um you know, we really look forward to that with glee. And um, to any of the non-Christians that are listening tonight, we really want you to recognize that we, we can't be saved by ourselves and of our own works. It is that um, it's that atonement through Christ on the cross, which will bring salvation. It's, you know, the Lord is a holy, just creator God. That's three characteristics that I define personally for the Lord. And um, that justice for our own sins came through came through jesus christ at calvary and for the muslims in particular um you know as, as brother Raoul would would know uh, we engaged uh, you know many years ago with abbas down at speaker's corner um jesus was crucified at passover and you know john chapter 1 verse 29 says behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world when you look through the quran the Passover in terms of the actual event itself for uh, where the Israelites, of course, were told to put the blood of the lamb above the doorposts of their homes. That's totally missing from the Quran. It's not there, despite multitudes of passages mentioning Moses and children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel. We just don't find that level of detail and that foreshadowing of Christ. and the crucifixion of our sins in the Quran. And, you know, that is, is deliberate, I would say. But I'll finish and wrap up there and, uh, you know, hand it over to who else wants to speak. Just a, a quickie. Um, thank you for your kind words. I'm um, not feeling too great, but um, somehow just listening to you guys is kind of half a healing effect so I'm, I'm happy to just listen in but I, I probably won't be able to participate but uh i'm always excited to listen to these streams so uh, i'm happy to just listen in the background if that's okay um if i get any worse i will drop off but if as long as it's nice and soothing and interesting it's a blessing <laughs> <in disguise. laughs> as, as long as long as we don't tempt you to stay stay on when it's intense and a little bit hectic <laughs> brother oh, i appreciate that appreciate that Brother Sai, how are you doing? Oh, shalom, everybody. I'm fine. Um, the thing about this weekend is that it's a Passover and the Resurrection Day on Sunday. We remember only one individual in world history came back from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and therefore, I just want to spend a little bit of time just detailing what the Lord actually said about this unique event. Uh, taking up the cross. The cross, the, the death of the Lord Jesus is denied in the Quran. Everybody knows that in chapter 4. Uh, the rhetoric is that the Lord didn't die. Now, atheists actually agree that the, the resurrection and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus is unique. David F. Strauss, for example, one of the most bitter critics of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus said in the 19th century, quote, the resurrection is the touchstone of Jesus and is decisive for the whole of Christianity, unquote, new life of Jesus. So obviously the center of everything that we teach, we hold dear, is the death and resurrection. Without the death and resurrection, without the crucifixion and the physical resurrection, there is no Christian faith whatsoever, and therefore Islam can say you win. But as everybody knows, the standard Islamic narrative has got holes in it. And the biggest hole is that the dates are late in the transmission 
of any data about, for example, Mohammed, whom they allege uh, died in 632 AD. Ibn Hisham uh, from Basra, 1,200 miles away from Mecca, wrote only about Muhammad in the year 833. However, there's a caveat. There are no documents, no written manuscripts of Ibn Hisham, who is supposed to be the first writer of anything about his Muhammad. So there's nothing. Uh, Waqidi died in 870. The hadiths come about by al-Bukhari around about 870, 875. Again, there are no written documents. Al-Bukhari uh, was actually uh, uh, writing in Uzbekistan, which is about 2,700 miles north of Mecca. Now, all these characters, Al-Tamidi, Sai Muslim, Al-Nisa, al tabari they're all writing 200, 300 years late. They are not eyewitnesses of anything that they're alleging about Muhammad. They don't even put down on paper what they're supposed to be writing about as eyewitnesses. And yet we as Christians are amazed at the, at the degree of historical data available for anybody to make a conclusion about the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ because they were eyewitnesses, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke was not an eyewitness, but he wrote as an eyewitness reporter because he was a medical doctor. So he actually went to people to find out about the data about the death and resurrection, etc. Paul came on, on the scene as well. So these are all early eyewitnesses. Now, this is my gripe, and I hope that this weekend Muslims will start to think afresh. If the Lord Jesus Christ uh, was a liar, then why on earth did he say, quote, in Luke chapter 9, and the Lord Jesus said to everybody, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Take up his cross daily. Uh, th so does that mean that Jesus was the example of, of carrying the cross? Of course he was, right? Otherwise, we as Christians cannot have a daily cross to bear. In Mark 8, 34, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So you need to take the cross, be crucified, and follow Jesus. That's, those are the direct words of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, and Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So I made, a, I made a, a little study of all the times that the Lord actually says, take up your cross and follow me. There are almost about 20 different places in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, where the Lord actually is telling people, take up your cross and follow me. Right? In Luke 14, 27, it says, whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple, okay? So the spirit that writes in the Quran in chapter 4 that the Lord Jesus was not crucified is, is a devilish one because the Lord is telling you must bear the cross and then you follow me. So if the Lord Jesus died, then we understand, yeah, we do the same thing. So we follow the Lord in crucifying our body spiritually this time because it's not physical. Nonetheless, the Lord did it physically, right? Uh, and I've said this thing to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In uh, Corinthians, uh, sorry, Galatians chapter 6, but far be it from me to boast, except in the cross, in the cross of our Lord Jesus Messiah, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So Paul is talking about the crucifixion exactly as Jesus said, Carry the cross and then follow me. Okay? So why didn't Muhammad <laughs> uh, carry the cross and follow him if he was a man of God? The Philippians, the same thing. In Romans, uh, there's so many other verses. Then we come to the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. And it starts off in verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bore record of the word of God and of the testimony of whom? Of Jesus Messiah. 
and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads, and there we hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is at hand. Okay? And then it says in verse 5, from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first prime minister of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Okay? And then in verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. Okay? And then verse 11 saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book. So the Lord Jesus is commissioning John to write all these things in a book. And this is the last book that God ever gave us. Right, it's called, it's called the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, the unveiling of the Lord Jesus. And he sent to the seven churches who are witnesses again, who are in Asia, now today Turkey, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thartaria, Sardius, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So these are well known towns in the first century as compared to Mecca, which does not exist in the seventh century. So there's a problem right there. And I'll just cap off these things. I am he who lives and was dead. And pay attention. I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things that shall be here later. So history, circular history actually shows this is very true. And just to give you one quick reference, right? Uh, the Jewish people will be celebrating also Passover the, this time of year as well. Uh, they have an official record. They are not Christians. They are Jewish people. In Sanhedrin chapter 43-A of around about AD 70, it says, quote, in the eve of the Passover, Jesus was killed, was hanged, because he practiced witchcraft and enticed Israel to apostasy. Anyone who can say anything in his favor, let him come forward and plead on his behalf. But since nothing was brought forward in his favor, he was hanged on the eve of Passover, and quote. I emphasize that he was killed on the Passover. And we agree. This is what the New Testament writers, Matthew, Mark, John, etc., also confirm, okay, independently from the Jewish writers. The Roman writers also say the same thing. Jesus was killed. So if you're a Muslim, you've listened so far, why does your Quran tell lies? that jesus it appeared that he, he died but no he didn't if that is true then somebody was pretending to be jesus when the lord jesus has told us in matthew mark and luke and i quote lastly if anyone would come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me the lord jesus is our example he went to the cross so christians are people who come from the world they go to the cross as well and then the resurrection happens later so this is something that Muslims must get to grips of. Why does the Lord say, take up the cross, don't deny it, and then follow me? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, lovely points made, um, brothers. Um, so, of course, um, we are in this uh, week of uh, Passover, the uh, Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Ideally, of course, um, we should be celebrating Passover Day and the Resurrection Day. Um, unfortunately, though, in history, you know, uh, the split was made where the Christian calendar was uh, separated from the Jewish calendar. Very unfortunate. But uh, that's where we are. But um, I think Brother Sai's point I'd really like to highlight, of course, uh, Brother Darren mentioned of uh, the significance of these uh, days that are coming up. The, um, the uh, uh, Passover sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal sacrifice and the Resurrection Sunday. The days are so significant in a Christian's calendar. These are the highest days apart from of course, the day which is to come in the future, which is the uh, day of tabernacle, when the Lord returns to tabernacle with us. So uh, 
apart from the day of uh, the feast of tabernacles which is to be fulfilled in the future when the lord returns these two days the feast of uh, passover and the feast of first fruits which correspond to the death of jesus christ and the resurrection of jesus christ are the uh, most important days the highest days possible uh, we need to bear that in mind um, i don't know if uh, if you are a christian if you want to know about this essentially in the old testament in the mosaic law there were seven feast days for three of those feast days um all men jewish men by jewish i mean all men of israel are supposed to be in attendance in jerusalem regardless of where they live and this is why um as a matter of fact very curiously jesus did some of his significant miracles uh, during one of these three feast days when did he raise up lazarus back alive just pre just before one of these feast days and the reason he did that was because these are the best days for the news to spread around marketing and the lord wanted uh, lazarus's res resurrection to be known in the religious community uh, fairly widespread and that is why he from from all that um, it appears he did the the uh, miracle uh, during that period um but um, coming back three high holy days three high feast days two of which were already have been already fulfilled in the lord jesus christ passover first fruits in his death and in his resurrection there is one more which is yet to be fulfilled which is the tabernacles feast of the tabernacles and that is going to happen in the future beyond that these two are the high holy days and so the point simply is um, if you are a christian if you are so much given into this idea of christmas this is maybe time for you to wake up to you know recalibrate your minds uh, to uh, be consistent with the scriptural world view um but having said that uh, the other major point i think that uh, brother sai is bringing up is that the crucifixion of jesus christ is so integral to the new testament documents jesus you know mentioned about that multiple times in various ways and so on and uh, uh so therefore recorded in the um new testament but uh, we also have a uh, sort of similar things in the other books also so very integral the death burial resurrection of jesus christ very very integral to the uh, new testament documents you can't you can't claim that these got in by mistake if you did essentially you are in serious trouble uh, interestingly the quran has mixed reaction in relation to the crucifixion uh, and death of jesus christ we'll come to that later uh, we have someone join us uh, um aron hello hey brother how are you hey you hey brother aron okay i was saying <laughs> who's this uh bye gosh is okay how are you doing oh, well thank you grace and peace to you all oh, Lord praise Jesus. the lord good good to see you uh, how's uh, how's everything family and everything okay everyone is fine here by god's grace and uh so all, all of you as well yeah by god's grace we are all well also good okay. to see you okay did you join just to listen in a little bit uh brother Aaron, or do you want to make any point right at the start um, i was listening i tried to get on uh as uh, many wednesdays as i can now but uh um, the schedule changed this wednesday so i thought I'd just join the live stream and just uh offer in little bits where, where i possibly could especially with um we're talking about the passover coming up as well yep. and the the inverse uh with, with islam and I, i find it interesting that um that we know that muhammad um uh, evidently plagiarized the scriptures because there's a lot of talk at the moment about the you know the sacrifice of uh, the red heifers and such and we get the clear description of uh, the heifers in numbers 19 right but in and it clearly says a red heifer but in quran uh, chapter 2 allah says it's a yellow heifer so oh yeah have, yeah two yeah two two very different contrasting accounts 
Um, so yeah. Muslims, one, they need to they need to be able to reconcile this. But when we talk about the the, the coming end of days and as a result of this, um, the the Muslims have an almost it is a complete inverse of the script of what's in the biblical text because their text would say that um, they believe that Jesus is a Messiah, but he's not coming back as God. He's coming back to you know break the cross. Uh, destroy and understand and help destroy the Jews, which is really the inverse of what we find uh, in, in the biblical scriptures. In fact, it's the complete inverse. Um, but the, the signs that the, the Muslims are looking for, for the Dajjal, um, is actually, it, it does correspond with uh, similar um, signs that we have for the Antichrist in the scriptures, only that the Antichrist is going to obviously be going after the the, the the remnant church is going after the true born again Christians. He's really going to go after the Jews. And why the, the Muslims, there's the, you can see the twist here in the Muslim scriptures because the Muslims believe that when Jesus comes back, he's going to kill the Dajjal and he's also going to lead uh, the Muslims against the Christians and the Jews. So there's a, there's a, there's a wicked, wicked, devilish inverse here of the scriptures. Uh, that, that's um, of the true scriptures that we find in the Bible, uh, where in the in the biblical t in the biblical account, uh, which is far more detailed, by the way. So, if there's any Muslims that are listening, you should absolutely consider what the Bible has to say about this matter, especially as, as it's talking about Jesus. Um, the the events of when Jesus comes back is that um, all those who are who have died, um, having believed in him, are raised first, and those who are left on the earth. Who have believed in him will be raised will be raised um, along with them. The dead in Christ uh, shall rise first. But it, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to pour out his wrath against all unrighteousness as God, as the righteous King of all humanity, um, and he's coming back to save his people who are who are here, um, and to bring those to put to to put to help us take off the the, the perishable, so that then we we're clothed again in new garments in the imperishable. Uh, we are put, moved from corruption into incorruptible bodies, and that's that's the resurrection. So therefore, then we have true compatibility with God. We are able to stand in the presence of God um, because Jesus has, is our righteousness, and this is the, what we have with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, whereas the, the 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 Muslims, they don't have this. They don't have this. They just have that there is a inverted Jesus, an inverted cross, and that this Jesus is coming back to put to death. The Christians and the the Jews, who is for, in their camp, as far as they're concerned, are you know outside of the Ummah, can't be saved, etc. And as their text would say, um, you know, in those days, uh, the trees and the rocks would cry out and say, "Look, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him as well." And they will apply this liberally to Christians and Jews. Um, so, Muslims, any Muslims that are listening to this, either now or in the future, I, I strongly, strongly advise you. To consider the biblical text of what the biblical texts have to say on the matter then you need to ask yourself the question as to why the quran has the exact inverse let alone the the wrong description for the heifer um i mean our rule uh, with the greatest of respect i believe that your daughter could pick, could choose the difference between a red color and a yellow color even at her age you know this is if this we're talking about what the the truth is here there shouldn't be this many inconsistencies between the biblical account and the account in the Quran. So with that, I'll commit that to you. Thanks, brother. Hi, thank you. Thank you, brother. And uh, so um, I was struggling a little bit because Ruth is uh, singing in the background. Apologies, but I did catch the main point. Um, uh, I think brother Darren brought up, brought up uh, a related point, but the Sai brought up a related point. So the important thing that we are saying to any Muslim who is watching is that the Bible presents some details. The Quran seems to go against. Uh, uh, Brother Darren mentioned about the fact of the missing Passover in um, Surah uh, Israel. I forget the uh, chapter name, but uh, Surah maybe 13, 16 or something. Um, surah uh, which goes uh, by the name of Israel, Ben Bani Israel. Um, there, I, if I remember correctly, nine signs that Moses performs, not ten. Passover is skipped. Um, now, uh, Brother Sai talks about how 
the resurrection of jesus christ is, sorry the death of jesus christ is denied in the quran whereas you know literally every other uh, historical document attests to it and now brother aran is talking about further details of you know haifa and the character of the jal and the christ the antichrist and the christ and so on in the uh, future how things are reversed um, and it's interesting how the muslims are focusing on dajjal these days you know trying to keep the fire up in their in their current ongoing war clearly seeing that they are not uh, able to prevent the destruction of hamas they now trying to play this other tactic to mobilize um mobilize uh, muslims you know to keep the fire up uh, in relation to the fight hello um abraham uh, i just wanted to say brief hello to you how are you doing yes yeah, shalom 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 from israel shalom to all of you i wish you a very uh, what i don't know how to wish the uh, to say happy easter or something like though according <laughs> to your people it's a little sad day because of uh, you believe in yeah. uh, crucifixion of christ so but but it ends into a very happy occasion which is called i think easter so yeah. really when when the dates are of easter well um unfortunately uh, essentially by, by the way uh, these are supposed to be the mes- mes- messianic fulfillment of passover and festival of first fruits it's supposed to match the jewish calendar but because of various problems in history um it has sort of you know uh, split uh, away from the jewish calendar but um and also given a new name easter which is not biblical at all um but yeah um good friday is is when the lord jesus jesus uh, you know was crucified as the passover lamb we believe christians we believe it's the passover lamb the eternal passover lamb uh, given of the pattern of the passover deliverance of the nation of israel and uh, and the resurrection sunday which happened on the third day is uh, is what is uh, supposed to be aligned with the first festival of first fruits so that's the background um background to this uh, abraham yeah yeah it uh, this i think this is the only occasion where jews and christian they come together because they the the call the the supper supper was basically i i think as i believe and i maybe a jews also maybe many jews or some jews must uh, or believing that this was the seder leila seder the first night of passover yeah Huh? Yeah, uh, the first of uh, first night of Passover, he had with his all followers. Oh, yeah. is that that's why that's why it's also a very famous picture. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, kind of a, uh, this thing is uh, with his all the disciples are sitting on the table and yeah. eating food. That's the yeah. first Leila Seder. Um, yeah, and we have we have a first is the great one. then we have seven days uh, to eat uh, matza then and and celebrate and as you have mentioned that we all the jews from all over israel and now it is from all over the world they try to come all yeah. the jews uh, who could afford to fly to israel from all over the world they will come and in one of these seven days or eight days celebration they will uh, visit the holy temple and that yeah. tradition is still on i try to go there once i had gone to the uh, temple mount as well and during pesa i think yeah. after having lela seder then we went so this is a this is a day of very big biggest one of three biggest festivals for us and the, yeah. this this festival was for our liber- liberty from the bondage of egyptian bondage egyptian slavery and yes. uh, a new life a new calendar in fact the rosh khodesh calendar starts from here 14th of nisan so yeah. and four days before we have a uh, we have the sacrifice i think you believe in that 
probably and if not i have no problem and by the way we missed you yesterday uh, we had a very yes. good uh, some <laughs> some sort yeah. of discussion i'm planning to come on next tuesday also and yep. by the way maybe i'll continue uh, if they the, the this thing my profession will allow me to do okay uh, so yeah. i wish you uh, what shall i say uh, you uh, can say good friday, good friday and resurrection sunday it's really okay. it's really like uh, yeah we <laughs> I, ideally we should be wishing you also uh, because this is essentially what the messiah did um uh, did um, to um, to uh, essentially provide redemption to israel in it for eternity also but of course we are in the middle of discussion of that you know uh, so um i I'll, I'll, i'll sort of reserve that you know uh, wish for later in other words it's it's very much it's very much uh, um, a jewish celebration time um the first christians yeah, yeah. of course were yeah. very <laughs> i i can't hear you anymore are you saying something are you on mute i'm not sure but i uh, can't hear you anymore but um maybe where when you when you uh when you have your audio uh fix maybe we'll hear you again but um yeah, he, he had some problems like this on tuesday as well on tuesday yeah, yesterday also um but um but but if you are a muslim if you are watching this is a demonstration of the fact of how the christian message is really a next step um really logically coherent logically consistent meaningful historically to the jewish revelation of the hebrew scriptures whereas quran comes comes and essentially comes uh, and fills in a vacancy that never existed and denies all the facts which are solid historical facts just for bare survival and so if you're a muslim who is watching you might you might be aware but if you aren't maybe i can repeat the last few weeks we have been challenging muslims on um, essentially establishing how um, islam is an abrahamic religion um, and um, we haven't had a proper response to that yet i was hoping nader would join and uh, you know try attempt uh, in responding to that uh, challenge but uh, not sure if nader is watching nader if you're watching with uh, with uh, your friend chris who is my friend too and you are my friend too nader uh, you're most welcome to join us uh, to make a case but um, what we have done so far you know in talking about the passover in talking about the uh, resurrection sunday uh, the festival of first fruits what we have done so far is um, is that the biblical world view is fairly consistent fairly clear fairly comprehensive there's no loophole here at all islam doesn't fit in it's like a it's like a it, it's very clearly a scam perhaps arguably i think the roman catholicism and islam fight you know in arguably we, we don't know which is the biggest scam in history you know may, maybe you know with a little bit more statistics which we haven't got time for we might be able to establish which one is the biggest scam religious and financial but um, certainly you know be- between you both you know one one of you is number one and an- another is number two the biggest scam in human history in terms of religion and in terms of finance um maybe what what i'll do is even now um um abinet techno um it's lovely to see you here i can see that uh, you support israel that's good to hear um but uh, i think from uh, your uh, message it seems like you might be a hindu uh, if you are uh, can i please request you to if if you are able can i please request you to join life 
join our stream so we can have a conversation it's all, not only it, during wednesdays we don't only engage with muslims but we also um, engage with people who follow indian world religions and uh, from what i can see um, you're talking about uh, sanatan dharma um, so maybe maybe you want to um, uh join the live stream right now and we can talk about uh uh hinduism uh with you if you are able you'd be most welcome you know once you join and i can uh, give you some details of uh, the format for our engagement and we can take it uh, from there but uh, if you are unable to join for some reason that's oh, okay that's fine no problem um if you want to try you can Uh, so abina abinet techno says he understands english but uh, can't talk much when you say can't talk do you do you mean you can't speak in english or do you mean um, you can't talk at the moment because it's uh, very early in the morning half past 2 there in india um please respond it'll be lovely to see you uh, but in the meantime uh, lovely to see you brother bolak brother bolak is part of our home fellowship uh, it's lovely to see see him here uh brother tata for says every abdul runs from arul they avoid people that ca- can't answer back um it's very true islam uh brother josh says hello sai brother josh says hello to you uh brother sai um i always watch you from speaker's corner moses from uh, moses's channel flash flash's channel uh brother sai okay <laughs> moses <laughs> uh, i've got yeah, a couple of questions for our muslim friends yeah uh, since ramadan is here uh can any muslim out of the 1 billion muslims tell us which muslim has actually fasted for 30 days and 30 nights without food just water because moses fasted 40 days 40 nights twice without food without water elijah fasted 40 days 40 nights no food no water and finally uh, the lord jesus the messiah fasted 40 days 40 nights no food no water all these three were very hungry afterwards So which muslim has ever done 40 days 40 nights no food no water but uh, let's make it easy just 30 days 30 nights no food no water because muslims say ramadan is very special and yet everywhere I go uh, around the supermarkets i see muslims buying more food i thought they'll be they'll be they wouldn't be buying any food at all in ramadan So is this feasting or fasting? Because three Jewish people, Moses, Elijah, and King Jesus have demonstrated that you can fast for 30 days plus without food and without water. So doesn't Allah give strength to one Muslim out of 1 billion Muslims to do a proper fast 30 days, 30 nights without food and without water? Um I leave it up to you guys because there's something fishy going on when you're buying more food instead of less and going to Kentucky fried chicken every other night. Jesus said don't be fully he can't fool God. The 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 brother so you need to be a little bit careful you know in the middle of your or maybe towards the end of your comment you're saying there's something fishy don't remind them of more food. They may go and buy more fish now, and you know, make that part of. I don't know where uh, you know during Ramadan they can have fish also. I'm assuming they can, and they'll go for that too. <laughs> I'm eating them. fish and chips today after six <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> But um, having said that, uh, I actually, I mean, I, I don't know if uh, others do this. I actually do um, an Islamic fast every day. So throughout my life, I've done this. every day in between Easy. my yeah in between my meals um i fast all the time since birth in between my meals i always fast um and in between drinking water i always uh, avoid water also 
on not have water but in between um, having water so this is um i've i've done this you know may, maybe this is why <laughs> i'm wondering maybe this is why uh, they think everyone is born a muslim you know <laughs> cuz everyone does this you know ah <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh, on a serious <laughs> did you watch that film just a question for you did you see that video of a, a white english man who's, who who don't think is a christian whatsoever and the muslims were laughing at him eating his lunch and they were telling him how dare you eat lunch while we're fasting excuse me this is arrogance of muslims in in britain telling a, a man who's eating his own lunch i mean what's going on you don't tell people oh how dare you eat food because i'm fasting that's arrogance and the the lord jesus said when you're fasting you don't tell anyone right you wash your face put oil on your face and then you don't tell anyone you're fasting and then you'll be rewarded by god later but you've already got your reward you're boasting but how dare you tell an a person who's not a muslim not to eat food when he's not a muslim just because you you're you, you're incapable of not staying away from food yourself and you have a big dinner at night you're being hypocritical as well this is shocking well this this is the uh, islamic tactic isn't it uh, where this is this is um um the islamic tactic of expecting everyone to behave like a muslim even when they are not a muslim so they can normalize this religion across uh, the nations and i'm sure i mean what what we um, yeah i did see that video um, brother sai that you're talking about um, um it's it's only one video that has surfaced i'm pretty sure you know many such things are happening um, in many many different places um, uh, across the uh, what are meant to, what are supposed to be sort of maybe the former christian nations i i would have liked of course the gentleman to have stood up um to this nonsense and said hey don't bother me I, this is how i'll eat i think um you know many times in um, um in uh, different workplaces you have a sort of a sort of a muslim majority and they have uh these sorts of things and if you stop them they'll say oh no no we were just joking but uh but uh, what is here to joke do do you and i go around and you know say hey, why are you not celebrating good friday to muslims and to others this is this is extreme extreme wickedness uh, and um, they go around doing this um, what they should be doing what they should be doing if you are a muslim uh, what you should be doing by the way instead of going around and hassling people as to why they haven't maintained their quran properly you know uh, uh, brother sai of uh, how this um, how the school going child um somewhere um um somewhere uh, maybe near midlands or maybe up north in england uh was you know um was uh, hassled much because he bought a quran and he had a folded page in the english quran do you remember that uh, brother sai um, uh, a year ago something i really wanted to go there um and you know um, and um, and follow up on that but of course you know things were a little bit um, sensitive because the family didn't and and the police gave in absolutely phenomenally um ridiculous the police gave in and they brought out a public statement that oh you know what this is this is a this is a a, 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 a boy who is not mentally well and that sort of stuff and i am thinking what is this you know and i really want i rang the school up by the way i rang the school up you know trying to see if there was any way i can get in, get in touch with the child and the family but um but uh, unfortunately of course because of uh, data protection reasons they wouldn't um, give me the details i really wanted to drive and get there and you know somehow get in touch this is this is utter utter ridiculousness where you move right. around oh, you're around. right Uh, yeah, you're right. Because what's happening in Britain, as an example, is that 
our political masters, it doesn't matter whether they're liberal, Democrat, uh, conservative, labor, they are surrendering the Jewish Christian heritage of Great Britain, which stretches many hundreds and hundreds of years, all to accommodate an Islamic agenda. So Muslims are, are gleeful. I mean, over the next few days, the BBC, which was started by a Christian man called Lord Reith, used to have a Christian epilogue service every night about midnight, and then they'll switch off the, the service because Lord Reith said, we want to make sure that the BBC actually broadcasts the gospel to, the, to the, what was then known as the British Empire so that everybody would come to these cultural Christian roots. And that's the reason the BBC exists by royal charter. But we have a Muslim now is in charge of their religious programs, especially their Christian programs. So you think, what is it, what's it, what, what is it doing with those programs? So that everything is being watered down to political correctness. So our institutions are not going to be bothered talking about the, the, the death and resurrection of Christ on Friday or Saturday, Sunday, this particular weekend. But they're continuously programming all about Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. And yet, come on, Muslims are less than 5% of the total population of Great Britain. So 95% of the population of Britain are atheists, secularists, humanists, Christians, Sikhs, Hindus, Jewish people, the whole lot. This is a majority. So why are, why are the majority population denied access to programs that reflect their particular culture? And since Britain, by law, is officially a Christian state, that's why the King Charles, when he became the king, actually put his hand on the Bible saying, I will defend the Christian faith. And yet the prime minister and all the ministers in government are supposed to follow his lead are surrendering to China, to, to all things Islamic, because probably because of money, uh, because they don't want to be seen as, oh, we're not horrible. So hang on. You're denying your Jewish Christian roots, and that doesn't make sense. You, you, <laughs> the Bible says if the, if the foundations are destroyed, then how shall the righteous stand? So this weekend would have been a unique opportunity whereby the institutions, TV, radio, would actually say, let's put proper Christian programs to remind this nation of its Jewish Christian roots. And yet, what are they selling? Easter eggs. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that sort of nonsense. It's, it's shocking. Exactly. Um, yeah, the Christian faith has been reduced uh, to some sort of, you know, comical things, you know, like Easter eggs and, you know, some sort of um, very trivial Christmas, you know, commercialized Christmas um, and so on. Uh, whereas they are um, highlighting, of course, um, the Ramadan. I mean, who cares about Ramadan? I mean, we, I mean, Muslims. If if you're watching, we 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 don't. We I won't give a penny, penny's worth of respect. If you do want respect, come join, show up at Speaker's Corner, begin providing evidence for what you believe in. This Islam is one of the biggest scams, arguably the biggest scams in history. What has it accomplished? It has accomplished mobilizing around a billion people who know nothing and could understand even less. This is, by the way, uh, Brother Patrick's, uh, uh, Brother Sai, you know, Brother Patrick, uh, my uh, the one who launched me in ministry he used to say oh, this. Yes, I know Patrick, yeah. and th th this this would be his uh, description you know nothing and you understand even less and that's what islam is ridiculous i mean who gave you the i mean if you are a muslim please join us explain to us who put together the quran when provide evidence if you are a muslim uh show up today 
and explain how Islam is an Abrahamic religion. If you are a Muslim, please come on board, explain why Islam gets so many simple, when I say simple, uh, uh, straightforward to understand historical details and scientific details ridiculously wrong. This this book is not even, I mean, uh, this book, you know, the, the one I'm holding in my hand, the, the glorious Quran, according to Pithal, you know, uh, uh, Muhammad uh, Marmaduke Pithal. It has around um, 400 pages. And I can honestly tell you, you know, I went through this multiple times, this Pithal and, you know, a couple of other versions. Uh, Pithal is the primary version I went through. Um, two or three times and one or more one or more versions you know sort of uh, once for the preparation of my book and I can honestly say this book is a load of rubbish gibberish nonsense and I'm sure if I ask brother Sai to come and he'd say this is a American comical book comic uh, book with its you know chapters and and you know all sorts of weird stuff and so on what is there which is anything which is worth sub you know worth in terms of communicating to human beings here utter gibberish nonsense you can't get your history right you can't get your theology right you can't get your um science right you can't get your behavior morality right you can't get any of these things right what are you doing carrying this uh, book around it's not even worth the paper it is printed on. Around 400 pages. You know, the best. Sorry, the I was best just going to add what you just said. Uh, on, the Muslims are always telling us there is only one Arab Quran, but that's not true. There are over 30 different Arab Qurans. Uh, for example, the most popular ones are the one by Warish and Hafsa. These are Arab Qurans. And since it's Ramadan for Muslims, which Quran are they going to use? Because they're conflicting uh, uh, verses. For example, in chapter 2, verse 184, in the Warish Quran, it says, Tamu uh, Miskinin, which means a redemption by feeding one poor man in the half translation in arabic the same quran says daimi maskanina which means redemption by feeding poor men plural so if you're a muslim living say in saudi arabia and you're short of money and you don't want to do ramadan but you want someone to act as a substitute you go to the other quran warish which says feeding a poor man one but if you're rich and you're feeling boastful and proud, then you can go and do the copy of the Quran by Hafsa, which is feeding poor men. So this is discrimination, isn't it? Just that, that this one verse alone destroys Islam. Because this is your Ramadan, and you're telling us that in Ramadan, if you can't if you cannot do Ramadan, you can select one person to do it for you according to Warish. Arabic Quran, but if you have a, a half Quran in other parts of the world, you need more than one person. So where's the fairness in that? Allah is very confused. And there are many other serious discrepancies between these two Arab Qurans. They over, I think the last count is about uh, 8,000 differences. So which Arab Quran are you going to use to legislate following Ramadan today? One, one poor man? Or multiple, depending upon how much money you got in your pocket. Is that what God wants you to do? Just to um, add on what Robert Sai was saying there, amen. Um, it's been every every major argument you've always seen at Speaker's Corner or online or any of the more popular Muslim apologists have made about their, their they are rock sort of assertions that they've been claiming uh clear and perfect guidance to mankind you know muhammad's a prophet muhammad was in the bible uh the quran has never been changed uh, you know they, we've got a clear and perfect preservation things like these every single one of these 
has collapsed. Every single one of these arguments that they've tried to make has collapsed under the weight of the evidence. And because of the weight of this evidence, these more popular Muslims now, even people down the corner, these are the people that are now having to address the, the, the avalanche of apostasy that's happening in the West, but also in Islamic countries because of the, you know, the advent of the internet and the proliferation of the internet, the spreading of the internet, the spreading of information. Um, and more recently, I've seen uh, more, uh, say, popular Muslim apologists who are now trying to cover up the fact that we know for a fact that it, it, it's been proven the Qur'an has changed. We, As Brother Sai was saying, we have so many different variants of the Qur'an. And their counter to this now is to say that the variants are complementary to one another. And no one was saying this stuff before. No one was saying this stuff before. So now they're shifting the goalposts once again. They're shifting the arguments once again. And, and the thing that gets me about this as well is that the people that are doing this as the gatekeepers and gate holders of information have people lining up underneath them, sometimes in their thousands. So some of these people have millions of followers who will, who will take a snippet of information from these people and then never, ever consider anything to the contrary. These people have dug their heels in so much, so much that they are consciously resisting the truth. The Bible has a word for that, and that's called a reprobate mind expression. Rather, the Bible says that when people sear their conscience so much, they actively resist the truth that God will give them over to a reprobate mind. And I cannot begin to express how dangerous that is, that when the, the, the spirit of truth, he, the spirit of truth has, has said to a man or a woman, just as the case was with Pharaoh. You've dug, you've, you, you have dug your own grave. You have hardened your heart to me so much that you will, I, the spirit of the Lord will say, you, I know you will never repent, so I'll give you over to the lusts of your own heart so that you will end up being destroyed by that. Muslims, you must go back and consider the true biblical texts. It is not good enough for you in your con it, when you stand before the Lord in judgment to say that, oh, um, Adnan Rashid, Muhammad Hijab, you know, I'm just putting names out the hat, the popular ones that people know uh, that it led me astray because you have a mind of your own, a mind that God gave you, a mind that's able to look at uh, observable evidence and work out what the truth actually is. If, if something is true, it will be observable and you know, it's rational. Um, what you, these changes that we have in the Quran that we that we that are proven now that anyone can go and find this information out for free. It's not going to cost them anything. Stop relying on these gatekeepers because they are making you just as much the sons and daughters of hell as themselves. They were digging their hills in and dragging you along with them straight into the lake of fire. And it, it, this, it, it, it pains my heart, really, because when we go out and we do witness and we, we give a proclamation of the scriptures and we try to speak to Muslims who come up and 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 to be fair, quite a lot of Muslims are, um, they are, they do have quite inquiring minds. They do want to come and talk, and, but it's the same thing again and again and again and again, which tells me that someone is repeating a script over and over and over again. Every one of us here on this live stream could probably come up between us with five points each, I would say, of where they've had the same sort of script from a Dawah, from a Dawah team, from people who have been more versed in this stuff. And, and it's all the same lies, repeated, 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 repeated. And these lies perpetuate because people are having the knowledge from a gatekeeper. They're not looking around them. They're not looking at what the, at what the texts actually say. So if the Quran is the truth, then why isn't it lined up with the gospel, with, uh, with the Psalms, with the poetic writings, with the, the major and minor prophets, with the Torah? like we have in the Bible, because in the Bible, we can see a clear, coherent message from Gen Genesis to Revelation. The message is about Jesus Christ. It's about the Messiah. It's always been about him from Genesis to the completion in Revelation, to the wrapping up of the end of human history onto, it, onto and into eternity. Now, if we are able to prove that and show that consistently, 
and then you were saying that the Quran is was given to the Arabs because the Jews and the Christians made a mess of it. Okay, fine. Then what about the word that was before the Quran? Okay, well, that's been corrupted. Okay, well, then your word says that none can corrupt Allah's word. And your word says that the Torah was given to the children of Israel. So you've got a, you've got a massive, massive problem here. And this is what I'm, what I'm ha um, going on about. Gatekeepers of information, okay, who are, who are almost the guardians of illogic, who are hammering it down your throat and telling you this is the way it is. This is what you've got to believe. This is what, this is how you're supposed to behave. This is what you're supposed to say and deny everything else. My friends, when you stand before God, this will not be a count. This will not, this will not hold up. This will, none of this stuff will hold up. You will die in your sins without the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no forgiveness of sins without the blood of God's only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're calling out to you in love to tell you the truth, but also in power, because we're not going to surrender on this. We're not going to we're not going to back down on this. We're here to tell the truth to whatever end happens, whatever, no matter what happens in the future to any of us. We're here to proclaim the truth that Jesus Christ died for the sins of humanity and all those that come to him will be made righteous and made clean and made holy. And their sins will be remembered no more. Your righteousness stands in the Lord Jesus Christ and not your works. That's what I like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Aaron. Um, before we uh, say anything else about Islam, um, I'd like to comment on um, something that uh, Abinet is saying. I, I didn't quite catch your name, Abinet. Uh, you didn't mention that somewhere. Um, um apologies I, I i think you did mention your proper name abinith abinith is your proper name um lovely to uh, see you here abinith i know you said you can't speak in english but uh, you can only follow uh, maybe text based english i'm assuming um let's be clear um I don't know if you've heard about scrutiny of Islam that we have been doing and that some other people, many other people have been doing um, on YouTube. I don't know if you're familiar with any of that. If you are, you might um, you might know that um, uh, Islam doesn't stand up to scrutiny at all. Who wrote the Quran? No answer. Who put together the Quran? No answer. Or at least the answers aren't um, uh, sensible uh when uh, was the city what is the evidence for the existence of city at the time of supposed muhammad no answer and so on you might have seen all these things can we please can i please suggest to you that actually with hinduism hinduism isn't far off from islam in relation to evidence what you call a sanatan dharma um, it's interesting, um, you say that Sanatana Dharma is the oldest religion on earth, Rig Veda is at least 4,000 years old. <laughs> Very interesting claims. But where does the evidence lead us? Um, Rig Veda, by the way, there's no way you can prove Rig Veda is of Sanatana Dharma at all. At all. I don't know if you've read the Rig Veda. Many, many people don't read anything from the Vedas and make plenty of comments about the Vedas. I have a book, uh, the Vedas, I can show you uh, in my uh, bookshelf here. Long story short, when appropriate questions are asked, um, Hinduism crumbles also. It's a very evil system. It doesn't have evidence to back many of its claims. It does not come from God and it cannot take you to God at all. We're not playing with our lives. We want you to follow what is God's own word. 
what can be demonstrated to be communication from God and therefore has the relevant content to help you reach him in eternity and that is not Sanatan Dharma that is only in the person of Jesus Christ and this is why um, uh, one of the brothers earlier commented and uh, commented uh, to you, uh, Houston, uh, Brother Houston, I think, commented uh, to you earlier saying, you say you know Jesus, but we'd really like to challenge you by saying you don't know Jesus unless you know what he taught. And so the point simply is, can we please encourage you, Abhinith, to get to know Jesus Christ through what he said and who he was as recorded in the Bible, as recorded in the Bible. This is very, very important. Indians have conceptions of Jesus which are inadequate many, many times. They see Jesus as a good teacher, which he is, but that's not the entire story to who he was. Abhinith, wherever you are, could I please recommend to you to grab hold of a copy of the New Testament, the Bible, and begin reading the books Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Please begin. Sanatan Dharma doesn't even come a million by a million miles close to what Jesus knew about your state, about my state, about our propensity to be evil, human beings, any human being, and so on. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, Houston is uh, bringing up a relevant point there and he's asking, what is the source of Sanatan teachings? Actually, there is no, no one has a clue as to what you put together to form this dharma. It is made up as you go along. And so, why don't the Old Testament? Well, you need to start somewhere. Our recommendation is the New Testament. If you want to start in the Old Testament, by all means. <laughs> by all means. Um, Abhinit, this is serious stuff. If you think Sanatan Dharma is 5,000 years old, please answer me a simple question. And this is just a taster, by the way, just a taster. Across India and across the former Indians, the, what is today known as the Indian subcontinent. India is, by the way, a very new country. Please note that carefully. India is India only since um, since uh, independence, 1947. Prior to that, you know, uh, uh, prior to the British coming, there was no such country called India. Tamil Nadu, for example, where I come from, was never part of any northern empire throughout history. Um, so India is a very new country. But if you consider what is today called the Indian subcontinent, and if you take archaeological artifacts acro from across the Indian subcontinent, note carefully, the first widespread language It's Bharat. Well, show me the evidence for this Bharat 5,000 years ago. Show me the evidence for this Bharat. Bharat is only a figment of imagination uh, in your um, myths, never in history. You can't find Bharat in history at all, except, of course, in the new country called India, which is also called Bharat according to the constitution. You will not find it in history bef uh, in history from 5,000 years ago. You will not. If you think you can, bring the evidence. We can deal with that. There is no such thing. Any In any case, the challenge I was going to present to you was, note carefully, the first widespread language that is recorded across the Indian subcontinent 
is not Sanskrit. By a million miles, it isn't. It's a language called Prakrit, not Sanskrit. It goes, it flies in the face of the claims of Hinduism. Okay, you jump from pillar to post in making your claims. I'm assuming when I uh, when I when I made the claim about five thousand years old, uh, when I when I said India is a new country, you won't find uh, an India going uh, before the British uh, coming to India. You said uh, you you made this comment, so I'm assuming you implied. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, you didn't imply. Maybe maybe it's um, it's not a well, of course it's not a well formulated statement. This one. So maybe that's not what you meant, but I thought you meant that India isn't an old country, but Bharat is. I'm assuming that's what you meant. Uh, but uh, if that's not what you mean meant, uh, that's fine. No problem. Uh, the point simply is, as much as Hin uh, Islam is a big time scam, Hinduism, whether it's Sanatan Dharma or any other version that you follow, is also it's a big time scam that keeps people that takes people on fast track to death and destruction and doesn't take you anywhere close to god for example if i asked you what would take you to god today you won't have a clue Sanadhan Dharma will not tell you. Sanadhan Dharma will give you all sorts of fantasy ideas, which is uh, completely um, not based on uh, evidence, history. You know, anyone can say any random stuff. Doesn't make it true. Islam takes people on fast track to hell, death and destruction. And that is exactly what Hinduism in any form, shape of shape also does keeps people away from god desperately by the way when muslims go around persecuting people um the religious uh hindu nationalists aren't any different you should only look at the indian history of uh, vishwa hindu parishad um or you know some of the other offshoots of uh, rss and so on uh, very very evil movements you asked me earlier what's the evidence for uh, Sanatan Dharma being um, evil, well, uh, uh, well, you know, caste system. Caste system is one of the fundamental uh, uh, aspects of anyone who follows any version of Hinduism, including Sanatan Dharma. It's 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 fairly integrated into your myths, into Ramayana, Mahabharata, and so on. So, please don't be happy. That we are only commenting on Islam being wrong. Please note carefully that Hinduism is also wrong. It doesn't benefit anyone. Keeps people away from God. Abhinith, but we don't want you to go away from God. We want you to receive eternal life. And that is available only in Jesus Christ. Only in Jesus Christ. By the way, if anyone told you Jesus is a foreign God, that's the, that's the perfect example for you to understand whoever said that has no clue about God. If at all there is anyone who is remotely God, he simply cannot be Indian or Pakistani or, uh, or from the Middle East and so on. God is beyond all creation so there is no such thing called a foreign god if anyone tells you don't follow foreign gods avoid them like a plague stay away from them because they do not know what they are talking about so please abhinith can i please recommend to you to consider the bible carefully Please grab hold of a copy of the Bible. 
um, begin reading our recommendation would be to begin with the new testament if you want to read the old testament fine up to you no problem but uh, certainly get to the new testament jesus is the key very important so uh, can we please uh, say that uh, while while we uh, get by I, I we understand you you are unable to uh, join us live because uh, you 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 think your english isn't great you go, you type in good english so you should be able to have a reasonable conversation um through uh, a voice chat uh, but uh, but if you're hesitant that's fine um but uh, if you if you want to have a private conversation you know where i don't know hindi by the way i, I have um, hindi thoda thoda malum hai i know very little hindi so i i can't i can't do a hindi conversation but if you want to have a broken english conversation over a zoom chat no problem at all please email please email to the um to uh, please email us um, at the email address info 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 at operationsteven.org <laughs> yeah but it'll be hard for for me to have a a longer conversation uh, over a live chat so please uh, um if you can email that'll be lovely and we can uh, take the conversation up or if you want to join on streamyard right now uh, we can have a voice chat based uh, conversation but uh, please do not be deceived by sanatan dharma please it comes from ideas of human beings who seem to have had every reason to come up with ideas which could benefit them plenty of reason why we should think that these ideas are made up ideas because people had an incentive to propagate these ideas because it benefited them so not a good enough uh, system to follow show the caste system in, uh, do you uh, do you follow do you do you do you take the uh, uh, do you take ramayana and mahabharata seriously i'm, I'm no one is talking about who is hating who no one i will not none of us hate you uh abhinith we we as a matter of fact we uh we have been commanded to love you so it doesn't even matter what my personal preference could be and would be and so on irrelevant uh god jesus christ has commanded us to love others so um we love you but you need to be aware that any form of hinduism okay we believe in mahavad gita that's good okay so okay so um so you challenge me to show caste system and uh, you agree that uh, uh, you 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 uh, believe in bhagavad gita uh, explain to me uh, why krishna said uh, that uh, the war should go ahead even though the mahabharata war was essentially pitched relatives against relatives why did krishna say relatives still had to fight relatives why did he say that what was the reasoning he gave because i i see i see one of the one of the uh, like like muslims do like what muslims do one of the uh, points that you know um, um uh, hindus are advancing is that hey you know what uh, we don't believe in caste system because uh, you know what we believe in is is uh, is a system of varnas <laughs> well in reality um um uh, the very fact that caste system exists and is integral in hinduism is demonstrative of the fact of hinduism actually Uh, not being an early system in place let's talk about the uh, bhagavad gita what was the reason krishna gave 
for the warring factions who are relatives what was the reason he gave that they must fight with each other despite the fact that some of them did not want to fight and kill their own relatives what was the reason they gave please let me know if you know bhagavad gita that is and i know many people say you know use uh, many people will mention the name but would not know and uh, of course uh, simon brother simon actually makes this point the caste system here is to build a two story house so you can look down on another others from your upstairs balcony i mean caste system <laughs> is a very very evident uh, well attested feature across india coming from hinduism it's very very evident you just need to put together details from uh, your earliest source documents mahabharata ramayana which by the way don't, don't, don't they don't take you uh, far by a huge extent they are very late literature but um um mahabharata bama ramayana you need to collect details from them and add the uh, details from manu dharma manu smriti and that's it you know you know it's very simple for you to get details of caste system it's very integral to hinduism abinith if you hate caste system which you appear to be doing you need to leave hinduism sanatan dharma whatever however else you call it you need to leave it you agree from what we can see that it is bad time to leave time to leave sanatan dharma like in every other version of hinduism sanatan dharma also has caste system very integral to it so please don't fight against the obvious please don't argue against the obvious abinith we love you we love you in god what am i doing proof <laughs> do you know bhagavad gita or not abinith do you know bhagavad gita or not you said you we believe but do you know it or not maybe you don't know show me the slow <laughs> hey <laughs> this is ah uh, this is this is like a muslim saying well where is violence in the quran <laughs> <laughs> but the question i asked is do you know bhagavad gita or not if you do know bhagavad gita the question is very simple across mahabharata the crux is very simple why were uh, part of one one part of a family fighting against another part of the family relatives extended family why were they fighting with each other what what gave them what gave the validity that they could fight and you know what what was the recommendation krishna gave this is the entire story of mahabharata <laughs> i'm not talking about one sloka somewhere hiding that you haven't read before this is the entire story line you should only read uh, the first uh, 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 few chapters i mean why was karna uh, not allowed to uh, take part in a duel that was organized because he was seen as not having born in the right caste it's very simple it's right the way through it has it's as straightforward and as obvious like how islam is a dangerous violent religion caste system is so obvious right the way in mahabharata not just mahabharata ramayana you can take any any of these books if you know uh, anything about dronacharya you need to ask uh, why did dronacharya want ekalaiva's uh, uh, thumb uh, cut off why why wasn't he you know people today are lie big time please don't give in to the lies 
Indians today, including some of the leaders, supposed leaders of this religious um, uh, Hindu movement, lie big time. I, mean, I can't believe. I simply cannot believe how they lie big time because they tell you that our oh, caste system is nothing to do with the uh, discrimination based on birth, but rather it is um, based on the skills obtained. This is one of the biggest lies that could ever be in relation to Hinduism. You just need to ask, well, if that is the case, Ekleva learned from Dronacharya. He learned the skill. Why did Dronacharya go to Ekleva and ask his uh, thumb to be cut off? He has learned the skill. Let him be. Uh, let him be uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, ruling class. Why did he want the uh, the thumb to be cut off? That he could not be a warrior. Answer is very simple. Caste system, which can be easily demonstrated. Tell me who was a clever. <laughs> well. Okay, um, uh, Abhinit, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, argue about the obvious. If you know Ekleva, maybe you don't know, maybe you mean uh, you don't know and you want to know. Uh, but if that is the case, that's fine. Um, you focus only on uh, Krishna and Mahabharata. The long story short, it's very simple, which is that Hinduism is um, is demonstrably evil. Sanatan Dharma included, demonstrably evil. And this is why no one propagated Sanatan Dharma in the last 200-300 years. No one dared. Now, of course, with the political environment having changed, everyone wants to propagate it. You know, in the hope that, you know, there aren't scholars around who have read, um, read these things. But um, long story short, Sanatan Dharma is an evil system. I would even argue, you know, even Islam, I can bear a little bit. Uh, when I compare Islam and Hinduism, any version of Hinduism, Sanatan Dharma included, what I find is with Islam, you know, it's terrible violence and so on, but at least it's very clear to see. It's very clear to see. But in Hinduism, uh, the Hindu caste system is one of the most wicked things that have ever happened to human, human beings in human history. So, uh, please heed the warning uh, and um, if you are able, if you if you want to have, if you if you are able to jump on the stream, you are most welcome. And if you cannot, uh, because you think your English is um, a little bit flimsy, no problem at all. You can email. We can have a Zoom conversation. But please take the challenge uh, seriously. We are uh, we are dealing with life and death. We're not dealing with local politics. You know, none of us, you know, you see uh, Brother Sai, Brother Darren, Brother Aran uh, with me um, here in the panel. And you have brothers and sisters on the uh, live chat, Tartofo, uh, Simon, uh, Houston, uh, Sister FG and uh, Cherokee Gypsy and uh, um, uh, Brother Napoleon and so on. All sorts of brothers and sisters uh, on the uh, chat um, um, chat that you see the point simply is as much as we talk about politics also our focus is not in this world politics in this world yes we want to be responsible citizens we want to make sure morality is uh, established properly for as long as we are still on the face of the earth and so on but more important to us is eternity Eternity with God is extremely precious. I'd, I'd you know, uh, Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus gave a parable. 
and um, you know the implication of the parable is you know i'd want to you know i and my family we'd want to sell everything that we have for the sake of eternity none nothing in this world no riches in this world can um can equate to what is in store in eternity so abhinit it doesn't help you you're saying i won't say christianity is evil this is not our sanatan dharma teachings uh, abhinit it doesn't help you it really doesn't help you you yourself agreed that caste system is evil you agreed and you just wanted to know where in sanatan dharma you have the caste system i gave you a demonstration from what you said you believe in bhagavad gita and if you argue about you know varnas being different from caste you are arguing from ignorance because you can you know, i can easily demonstrate um using um uh, manu dharma manusmriti that that is not the case at all so the point simply is you using your own statements have agreed that sanatan dharma is bad evil you need to leave and follow jesus christ uh, why don't you debate with heated debate uh, what do you mean uh, not sure what you mean but um, um all right okay now let's return uh, abinith uh, it'll be wonderful to catch up with you please email if you are able to we really would like to invite you to come follow jesus christ he is the only one who can give you eternity uh, in heaven uh with uh, god uh so please that's our invitation um uh, please please uh, yeah brother simon makes this point very uh, important um please uh please don't get a uh, heated debate youtube channel oh, i see um uh, well haven't come across that before maybe at some stage can do that um no problem at all but uh, please note this carefully we are focused on eternity and jesus is the only god of the entire universe so uh, um you can have a uh, gods that you consider to be gods who are indian gods some sort of local gods and by definition when you say that they are not gods uh, only jesus is the eternal god god of the universe and beyond please come to him um we'll consider what you've said about heated debate but uh, uh for you uh, specifically abinit you need to come to the lord jesus christ please grab hold i know it's uh, very early there half past 3 Pre- please grab hold of a bible uh maybe tomorrow please don't delay please grab hold of a bible and uh, begin reading our suggestion from the new testament matthew mark luke john um please let's get back to uh islam so i am um, uh, muslims uh, if there is any muslim who is watching you're most welcome to join us to you know respond to many one of the many challenges um <laughs> one of the many challenges uh that we have raised so far i was by the way uh, smiling at uh, what abinith was saying uh, here but um yeah Robert. by the way i uh, gone brother who uh, who was that brother dan please gone brother dan yeah you know there's there's some parallels and um some things that need to be understood even in connection between uh you know what we class as ancient pagan religions and uh, in particular as i've mentioned before in my study of the ancient kemetic or egyptian religion and even in the ancient sumerian religion that seems to draw parallels with hinduism and it's often a repeated extravagant claim within even the afrocentric uh, conscious community 
uh, for those that believe in Kemetic spiritual spirituality, which is ancient Egyptians, uh, the gods such as Osiris and Isis, that the claim for Odis is the best claim. But in probably the most astonishing way, um, it is absolutely the worst and most ridiculous claim. And what I'm going to do is is just just kind of flesh that out a little bit more. So, in the ancient Egyptian system, you had Osiris, and he was married to his sister Isis, and he had a brother called Set, and Set ended up killing Osiris, um, according to. The story by Plutarch, his body was chopped into 14 pieces and scattered all across ancient Egypt. Um, in regards to what we call the Queen of Heaven, uh, Inanna, whose title obviously um, was passed on to, to Ishtar or Ashtoreth, which we read about in the Bible and Jeremiah uh, mentions the Queen of Heaven. And we find that title is the same title which gets... Um, so em embroidered onto uh, Catholic Mary. Uh, we find that even within ancient Sumer, Inanna, she had a fight with her sister. And as a result of that, she had to um, spend half her time in the underworld. And, um, you know, her, her brother, I believe it was, or, or lover Demuzi, uh, he had to spend some time in the underworld as a result. So what we tend to notice with these ancient pagan religions that go before Christianity is that they tend to have the gods fighting one another. And it wouldn't be any different from Hinduism. And this is the problematic claim when it comes to the total order and control and the divine laws. And, yeah, just the perfect order that we see within the triune god. So paganism, it has three key factors. Normally, you've got divine feminine, femininity. You've got polytheism, which we find a multitude of, of gods within um, ancient Egypt, ancient Sumeria, uh, the Canaanite religions, and also within Hinduism. Now, with polytheism, the pagan religions will always recognize a plural, plurality of divine beings. Uh, uh, Brother Darren, can I please briefly stop you there? Uh, just to make this important point, you know, uh, uh, just to add to what you're saying, in reality, you would be, uh, I don't know if you are aware, yeah, go ahead. it's not just that uh, uh, um, the Hindu religions, the um, uh, temple-based Hindu religions actually uh, share uh, some level of common thread in terms of, you know, principles, you know, but actually even characters, you know, who is, who is actually Ishtar, um, you go know, ahead, the Anana. Yeah. Is the Kali in India? I don't know. I don't know if you're aware. Yes, I'm um, aware of its parallels. Yeah, yeah, the divine uh, feminine. Yeah, the divine Kali, and it's not just the one or two characters. The most of the storyline um, is uh, most of the storyline. Most of the characters are shared. I um, I'm like I'm. I, 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 you'd be aware that you know I'm I'm doing my preliminary research on Hinduism at the moment. Yep. And I was uh, essentially long story short very simply to the indian subcontinent two sets of um paganism came in one from the north another from the south the north the northern ones are the fair skinned ones and you can trace the history back from sumeria babylon directly and the southern what entered through the south are the darker skinned ones which you can trace back to the Egyptian route. But of course, Egypt also brought had things from Sumeria, like you rightly said. Uh, in other words, it's, it, it took a while to, you know, propagate across the globe and, you know, come uh, and reach uh, India also in a peculiar uh, manner. Uh, but uh, I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that comment. Uh, go on, Brother Darren, sorry. Yeah, well, that makes sense because it's the same thing like within, um, uh, within Islam. You know, we read about the three daughters uh, of Allah in Islam and the satanic verses, where which I'm sure brother brother size always got the uh, the good memory on on that, or you you may. 
uh, where we get the daughters of, of Alar and, and Muhammad end up speaking about these three daughters of Alar or, or the, the, these cranes as intermediaries. And, um, you know, Deuteronomy chapter 18 tells you, um, you know, if a so-called prophet should speak in the name of other gods, really that, that prophet should be done away with. So Muhammad, obviously, in in the time of uh, Moses, uh, even speaking those satanic verses, which some of the earliest um, scholars for Islam say uh, were there. But back to what I was saying about um, sort of what we class now as pagan religion. So you've got polytheism, uh, a plurality of divine beings. You've also got a huge um, element of nature-based uh, sort of divinity. So as you said, um, with Osiris, he tended to be a god that was like a, a corn god, a vegetation god. His, his body, when he died, went green and it was then linked to the fertility of the land. And we find that this is what a lot, I'm, I'm pretty sure you would find the same uh, parallels within um, Hinduism. And then we've always got the sacred feminine. I'm not too sure because I'm not too familiar with the Hindu gods um, as to who that might be. But there's always one top hierarchical. I think you mentioned uh, the name of that goddess. That Kali, Kali is that one. Kali, um... okay. So now this, this is the thing. In the Bible, in Deuteronomy 6, chapter 4, what we read is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, one Lord. And the word for one is normally ekad, which can um, also or does denote compound unity. We get other verses, of course, which we use uh, for the triune God. But one thing that we're familiar with as far as the biblical text is concerned is we don't see uh, any infighting or any verses in terms of the God of the Bible. We don't see the Holy Spirit fighting the Father. We don't see Jesus fighting the Father or vice versa. But that's what I said within as I just described, within Sumeria, within ancient Egypt, we get it. And we get the same thing in, in Hinduism. So just to, to, to brief a couple of things, and then I'll ask you for your comment. Um, so if you go to Wikipedia and you look up Hindu mythological wars, um, you get Hindu mythological wars are the wars described in the Hindu text of ancient India. These wars depicted both mortals of great prowess as well as deities and supernatural beings, often wielding supernatural weapons of great power. Now, it says in Vedic literature, the central battle uh, in the Vedas is between Indra and Vritra, and the defeat of the demon Vritra leads to the liberation of rivers, cattle, and Ushas, dawn light. So then there again, we see the polytheistic gods within, within the Vedic literature who are fighting amongst one another, and then that then goes on to affect nature. And it's not something that we see in, in, the, in the God of the Bible. Another article that I'm looking at, which says, why did the Brahmins make the Hindu gods fight against one another? And it says the Hindu theology regarding the world is based upon the doctrine of Trimurti. According to this doctrine, the world undergoes three stages. It is created, preserved and destroyed. It is an endless cycle, sorry, endless series of cycles which goes on without stoppage. The three functions which comprise the cycle are discharged by three gods, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. And it says that these gods, they are not friends and they're, 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 uh, and not rivals. They're allies, allies of one another and not enemies. But it then goes on to say this. Um, the gods, sometimes far from being friends, appear to be worse enemies of one another. They compete for supremacy and sovereignty amongst themselves. A few illustrations from the Puranas will make the matter clear. So this is what we tend to find within these ancient pagan religions that uh, appear to go first and that people then want to make the claim that oldest is the best. These gods are fighting amongst themselves and in some cases it leads to catastrophic um, you know, catastrophe within nature. And just to finish off on this, it says, consequently, the existence of many gods amongst the Hindus is quite understandable because the Hindu society has been formed by the conglomeration of many tribes and many communities, each of which whom had their own separate gods. What strikes one as a strange phenomenon is the sight of the Hindu gods struggling one against the other. Their combats and feuds and the ascriptions by one god to the other 
all things that are a shame and a disgrace to common mortals. This is what requires explanation. So that's what that article is saying. And once again, if you want to read that article for yourself or I mean, I'm a layman as far as this is concerned, but I see the same thing, the same repetitive uh, pattern as within Sumeria, as within ancient Egypt. You've got these gods that should be responsible for the creation of, of the universe fighting one, one another. And we don't find that that is true, logical, or would make sense according to the creation of the universe and the divine order and love and unity that we see within the triune God. So what's your thoughts on that, Errol? Um, yeah, essentially, um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I agree with you based on the documentation that you have read, um, Brother Darren. Based on that, I agree. Essentially, the parallels are clearly there. It's not, as a matter of fact, you know, when we trace the, his, the history of, um, uh, of uh, these claims it's uh, actually these are not it not not parallels but rather the same stories traveling from one place to another um but having said that the only the only point i'd like to make is that um when we you know this is part of what i'm um what i am planning to do for which i've done my preliminary survey and hopefully you know once i get uh, the one or two books that I have in Islam out of the way, I'll uh, jump on to proper, you know, deep uh, polemics in this area. But what I can say is that uh, the stories themselves evolved. You can clearly see the stories evolving also in India. And uh, this is where, as a matter of fact, Hinduism isn't even one religion. I, I use the term Hinduism loosely earlier. So the, in other words, there's plenty more detail. Um, and for example, Abhinit may completely even uh, not consider the Shiva, Vishnu uh, and uh, the, the, the other one, uh, um, uh, Trimuthi uh, at all. He may have a very different you know, form of Hinduism that he practices. May, I'm not sure which one he does. Uh, so yeah, oh, yeah. As long as we consider that detail, that uh, th there are many, many layers to the mythology that has come about in India. Um, you know, at various stages, various new layers have been added. As long as we bear that in mind, uh, the rest of the st uh, points I agree with, uh, Brother Dan. Yeah, that's cool, and that, and that and that makes sense to me. As I said, it it's something that we find replete um, yeah. through a, throughout a lot of the earlier uh, accounts of um, mythology that passed down to us. Um, yeah. What about you know, if you look at ancient Sumeria and ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, one thing that we find is that in terms of resurrection or um, eternal life it's it lays with the deities and the deities are m mythological within hinduism according to your knowledge is there an account of a deity taking human form and then proving that that deity can then live above sin and then being the the archetype or the model to 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 follow or atoning for the the entire world since. Mm, no, so uh, the what you'd find is uh, in Indian religions you don't find this idea of um, personal sin. You know, sin sin of a person. You won't find that paradigm at all. And this is why you know um, uh, you have the new age gurus who you know go around you know and uh, make millions of monies uh, millions of pounds of dollars in money um and uh, you know amass uh, spectacular wealth all over the place but i will have nothing to say about sin um in contrast what you uh, what you have yeah no one would be concerned about sin so abinit this is why abinit uh, right now 
even as he made his points and he might still be listening he would not even be concerned about sin um the basic moral principles that exist today in india are evidence for the fact of how uh, uh indians or the um, the um the ancestors of modern day indians actually had in their culture morality which survived despite the attack of the religion of sanatan dharma or rest of hinduism trying to wipe away this entire you know um, awareness of sin there still is morality which is evidence of the fact of you know um, culturally the ancestors having moral i'll give you a simple example uh, it's it's a very you know there are many many complex points in relation to um, uh, the indian religions that uh, i'd like to bring out you know when we do polemics i'll give you a very simple example it may not be very obvious to I mean, there are many such points which are not would not be obvious at all uh, to uh, foreigners also but certainly indians you wouldn't believe i'll give you a simple example uh if you go to india if you speak to a you know of course india is not one ethnic group there are there are thousands of you know different ethnicities um, even major languages there are uh, uh in indian currency you will find uh, the denomination of the currency written in 18 languages at least you know 18 from what i last no i don't know if uh, one or two has been added since then but uh, 18 languages and essentially it implies but these are only major languages there are many many people groups so when i say indian you know i'm making a rough approximation the point is you can go and speak to any of these indians and you will find that that they'll come across as very conservative socially socially very conservative yet you know I, you know nudity or nakedness would be seen as sort of abominable abhorrent to an extent i don't know if you know if if there is any foreigner here who wants to travel to india at some stage please be aware in india you cannot uh, uh, you cannot uh, give a public kiss even to your wife or husband you know uh, between be, between adults uh, a male and a female cannot Uh, give a kiss you know between uh, even husband and wife um it's illegal uh, to kiss in public that's how socially conservative the nation is yet go to a go to a go to a, a reasonably uh, uh, medium sized temple plus or above you will find nakedness all over the place in terms of the statues and that is an evidence for the fact that the religion that is currently being followed is a late comer and which has desperately tried to introduce norms which never actually successfully completely entered into the society but this religion this religion is still being practiced because of acceptance in some level shape or form I, I i trust you seeing what i'm saying a socially conservative one of the one of the most conservative nations socially you could come across yet in religion it's one of the most obviously unconservative nudity all over the place in a temple you would find and an indian would go to that temple wouldn't even bat his eye walking through that area because it's so it's so much of a sort of a discordance in the mind um you know what is called syncretism in religion um, in india so you'd find these things uh, uh when it comes to hinduism you know many many complex such phenomena um and this is uh, you know and of course uh, uh, uh shwelebi he i think he a gentleman i'm assuming he uh, refers to the kama sutra i mean absolutely phenomenal in terms of you know how much of course it's a, it's considered to be it's a very 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 abominable material 
book but it's considered to be some sort of a religious text advising you know of uh, advising people uh, in relation to sexual behavior and so on, physical sexual behavior and so on and most hindus um, when i say most 99.5 plus percent hindus would not have read kama sutra at all in their entire lives they would not i mean many of them may not even be aware of its existence um but it's part of hinduism so who wrote this and why did they write this when the entire society didn't care about this and never read this and never was aware of this and this is where you'll see how um, how on a very superfluous level a small group of people hijacked a very ancient number of tribes who lived in uh, lived in india in the modern day india hijacked them into believing that they are supposed to follow a religion about which they know near next to nothing but they have sold their souls to it and that religion you know eventually they added layer upon layer upon layer they have multiple strands today um and um, and people follow uh, most times people you know even uh, abinith uh, he mentioned that he believes in Ma- you need to note carefully what he said he said he be- i believe in bhagavad gita he did not say i read i read bhagavad gita and that's why when i asked a basic question he couldn't answer he asked me for the, for the sloka reference i mean because he doesn't know the basic story line in what is supposed to be a story book um and this would be sort of the um, awareness levels a level of uh, people in india layer upon layer of myth people may not be even, even aware of what myth uh, who wrote when and so on uh, very very unfortunate but through god's grace you know when we begin uh, proper polemics um uh, we'll be able to reach out to uh, many indians yeah thanks for that breakdown i mean that's that's really interesting one one last thing uh, just very yeah. small and succinctly um within the ancient kemetic religion which which you find you had cow deities so you had the deity bat you had hafor um you know these were bovine deities so you know you could go to temples and as you said within the temples you'd find um the images of these these cow deities um uh, osiris in particular had a bull um a, a particular bull that he was supposed to be kind of almost incarnated in or part of his uh, i guess spiritual manifestation was supposed to be found in this bull this bull is called the apis bull a p i s bull and when this bull died people mourned um so this is something else again that you tend to find within polytheism um i've heard but but never heard actual feedback on what is the uh the parallel for that in in hinduism as in a, a lot of people or some people from the west say that you know hindus will worship bovines cows all types of strange animals is that correct or you know what's the position um again it's a very complex area you know where pe- people normally would think that indians worship cows most indians would not uh, well apart from apart from in you know, a forced practice very very brief on one particular day uh, and a portion of a day for 5 minutes or something but they wouldn't even realize that they are actually worshiping uh, but beyond that they wouldn't even be aware that they are you know did you know worshiping a cow um if you go to india and say do you worship cows many will be confused but if you come outside of india and if you ask about whether indian was indians worship cow it seems like a popular thing and that uh, there is a reason for that but um, anyway to answer your uh, the original question brother darren um, is there a parallel to that not in my knowledge and this this is this is one of the thing you know how myths entered from various different roots and got in but not in in its entirety um what you would find is cows um cows are uh special only from uh, from what i can see in one of two different ways in one way there is a small group of people who are the normal who are the religious vegetarians by the way 
you know most people also think indians to be vegetarians most of india to be vegetarians which is not the case at all uh, a very small proportion of indians are vegetarians a very very small and and but the but the but the problem is it's that small who has religious monopoly um and they dictate terms the priestly class suppose a priestly class um and uh, and they 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 um they essentially were a nomadic people historically and so for them they had the, and for them essentially uh, the their main um, uh, livelihood in the past was through cattle because they were nomadic this this, this was a priestly group I, the, 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 these are the ones who went around you know making money like the chaldeans by the way the chaldeans that are being referred to in the bible who were all over the place you know trying to make money through some sort of through claims of um, uh, being middlemen to god uh, you know performing silly magic and tricks and so on so um, you have this group because they were nomadic their livelihood wasn't uh, pastoral so they didn't own lands to farm or you know you know produce food and so on because they were nomadic they couldn't take lands with them so uh, they 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 had animal cattle and especially um, cows because you know they you know had milk from the cows and um and um i you know had other milk products historically also very uh, very um um you know demonstrating that hinduism is a, is a complete uh, load of junk uh, what you find is uh, who was known to be vegetarians today history their own historical records very clearly state they were meat eaters and they ate their own cows you know they their own you know vedas document this but anyway uh, so you have them in relation to cows and then you have um, you have uh, some sort of a uh, uh, thanking cows for helping with uh, farming sort of uh, thing which 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 was you know like a farmer just being appreciative of you know all the tools that at his disposal and so on uh, but there is a hindu twist which is being practiced among some people beyond this cows have no relevance apart from when the hindu nationalist government took over uh, now you know two two or three terms two terms ago so about 10 years ago when they took over since then you know they, they wanted to do anything to make india hindu and they're trying desperately and from what i can see they i think even the next the election that's coming up uh, rather soon they seem to have a good wave and they might for they might um, win again from what i can see and they are the ones who have been uh, you know they are minions they don't get involved um, directly they always have their minions do their tricks so they can always say it's not us who is doing this and the minions they go around you know uh, persecuting in this case actually muslims are a little bit persecuted i uh, maybe i shouldn't say a little bit actually muslims are reasonably persecuted in india and that's one of the reasons why uh, muslims haven't been able to cause much trouble in india because they are being they are being actively persecuted in the last uh, 10 years or so and uh, one of the aspects of the persecution is that uh, of course muslims have beef many muslims have beef and um, and uh, hindus want to claim that you know cows are sacred even though it's not practiced properly and therefore it's only this large, small group of cow vigilante groups which go around and you know which not in the recent past but uh, before that um, which went and went around um even killing many muslims um uh, accusing them of uh, um uh, sacrilege sacrilege as accusing them of you know um, not treating who is supposed to be divine for them beyond that no reference to cows not 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 in the practice now uh, hindu religion has you know plenty of text all sort of gibberish uh, late literature which uh, which uh, is written to come across as prophetic early literature and so on and and then there's plenty of these gibberish nonsense so um, it's likely that you know some of them refer to cows but no one really rumor really is aware of these things
Thanks for that, man. Um, yeah, Krishna, Krishna does, uh, yeah, essentially, I mean, um, um, you find, um, she was, yeah, uh, yeah, essentially, um, Krishna, Krishna is this character, mythological completely. But uh, having said that, Darren, um, I, I don't know if it was, I, it was your previous, uh, question wasn't it when you asked me um do they have a concept of uh in um con concept of gods becoming human uh, god becoming human being and uh dealing with sin uh one one very interesting nugget that everyone needs to be aware whoever comes in contact with hindus when you when you're trying to speak to a hindu i use the term hindu you know I, my my father would hate using the term hindu because you know when i use the term hindu or hinduism he will hate it because he he was a scholar um uh, in history and he appreciated that hindu there is no one religion called hinduism at all um so he will when 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 i if i use the term hindu he'll be, he'll be really really upset because he'll say thambi how can you be my my son and you 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 don't even know that there is no religion called hinduism um but anyway um uh, but i i use it in a loose manner so you ask me um if they became human beings uh, the one nugget uh, that uh, we need to be aware of is you know when we speak about jesus being son of god to many to to christians of course you know son of god is god we are seeing in flesh of course to us son is not inferior to god you know father son holy spirit triune so for us, it's seeing God, but we use the term "son of God" um, in many times uh, in in our communication with a Hindu. Now, that may not be effective because to them it'd be like, okay, you're talking about son of God, but we even have gods who lived amongst us, like Krishna. You see, so they'll they'll you know in their mind they may not be able to vocalize it properly, not because they don't want to. But because it's so obvious in in their minds that they 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 wouldn't even realize we we may not be aware of it, where they'll think, but what's the big deal? You only have a son show up. We even have the father, you know, God in their mind, God show up. Um, so if you take the uh, story of Krishna, or, you know, all these uh, uh, mythological, uh, whether it's Rama or whatever, you know, number of characters, they are seen as incarnations i.e god becoming man um in their view of course none of this uh none of these characters can be historically fixed at all these are not historical characters none of them showed up in history um even though ramayana is very popular rama the story of rama many Hin hindus actually think ramayana is history and uh, to an extent, you know, there are many, uh, there is a water, um, salt water desalination project, which, uh, you know, my state wants to have in South India, uh, which is prevented from being implemented because they say that's where Rama built his bridge. You can't do that, you know, to that area sort of stuff, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Long story short, in their mind, gods took up human form. Uh, Buddha is seen as a Hindu god, by the way, in this storyline. He is seen as one form. And uh, Shiva is seen, seen as another form. Shiva is, by the way, the consort of Ishtar in Babylon. Um, all of which, of course, go to Nimrod, the Nimrod of the Bible. Um, so they see gods taking up human form although not to deal with sin but of course with no evidence whatsoever yeah uh, sure uh, brother I, I i i see a number of questions which have been asked uh, on the live chat um maybe what uh, maybe we'll we'll go through this uh, 
uh, quickly. Uh, bro, uh, Sister FG says, Brother, does the law allow Christian street preaching in Tamil Nadu? Yes. The beautiful thing so far, the beautiful thing so far is on paper, India is a secular country with a uh, uh, right to religion. On paper. In other words, anywhere, like, I mean, um, most importantly, uh, for the simple reason that uh, 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 Indian constitution was uh, uh, predominantly obtained from the British unwritten constitution. Uh, and the British unwritten constitution, of course, has a right to religion. So, um, so the written Indian constitution has right to religion. Uh, no one has changed that uh, yet. And so, um, and so, uh, anywhere, everywhere, you're allowed to preach in theory on paper. But the problem in practice is that um, is that um, Indian security uh, system isn't um, isn't um, properly clue, pro properly clued up on the law, and you know, which means you know, local vigilante groups can you know um, do whatever. And and the way India works is very, very different to a Western nation. Um, India, even though on paper is a is supposed to have rule of law, which it does, you know, in various different ways. When it comes to some aspects, especially in in terms of religion, um, you'll find a little bit of sort of vigilante like mindset. So this is where um, Christians uh, get persecuted and uh, persecution is not properly addressed and even muslims get persecuted by the way muslims were troublemakers in india until a while ago uh, in an obvious manner they were i think even uh, even something like 10 years ago or so maybe a little bit um, more ago there was a terrorist attack which uh, abraham the jew from india the gentleman who joined us earlier he mentioned about uh, um the terrorist attack in India. A few people from Pakistan actually came by a boat to Mumbai and launched on a terrorist attack. But um, but, but on paper, we are supposed to have uh, um, um, all freedom to preach. Um, but for police subcontract mobs, no, the, no, not not uh, not uh, on paper. But, you know, bear in mind, the police are also part of the society and the society itself is, you know, uh, um, society itself behaves in a little bit. The local customs are very important to Indians. Sometimes, you know, you can be a police of all. Let, let me give you a simple example. I'll give a very simple example. This this will uh, this will uh, help us understand. The prime minister of India could not enter into my state. Um, uh, during his last term uh, in peace because the people in my state were very against the Hindu nationalistic um, movement. So they essentially said, uh, go go back Modi was a very popular slogan raised. So this was the prime minister of India. He couldn't come. So that's how uh, the country works. Of course, it can't happen in any other nation. Uh, perhaps you can, you know, oppose and so on. But if the president or the prime minister wants to go somewhere, he will be able to. But in this case, he wasn't able to. Uh, for practical, uh, because of practical problems. Um, so uh, not uh, on paper, not uh, explicitly, but, you know, the in the way, in the way things work, um, you see if, uh, if police show up and if the local villagers or whoever uh, are manhandling someone, they may not intervene necessarily immediately. Um, Oh, in practice, it's a joke. This is the reality, very unfortunately. But uh, but here is where um, I'd really like to um, strengthen. I'd really like to do a. I'd really like to. Um, I have a few ideas in mind uh, to uh, to help to test to test or push the limits of the system to really get what is on paper on the ground also. I, re I, re I really have a few things in mind through God's grace. Please keep us in prayer. And uh, if and when I ask for some help, please, uh, uh, please, if you could help, that'll be wonderful.
Okay, so going back, um, uh, Shwile Bey asked, uh, is it true original gypsy people were Indians that followed Old Testament? Very hard to say. Very, very hard to say. I know, I know in the West, the gypsies are known to be from India. You know, it's somehow some sort of a common knowledge. But no one, no one in India knows about this claim. Well, when I say no one, I mean most India wouldn't be aware of this claim. Uh, because in most of India, you don't have such a, a gypsy group. But there are uh, in a prominent manner. Uh, there, 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 there are uh, one or two groups which are negligible, not not very prominent, not not many know about outside of uh, uh, close ge geographic proximity that they even exist and they uh, move around. But beyond that, no one knows, and this is why I got to know the claim that gypsies uh, are from India only after I left India. Only when I came, only after I came to the UK, after many years after coming to the UK, um, no one, not many, would be aware of such a claim in India. So I'll be a bit surprised. Uh, you know, I, I you know there there are a few different claims, for example, which I know to be blatantly wrong. For example, uh, one such claim is you know you, you know even what motivated uh, Hitler uh, as a Nazi, where where he claimed that he was actually following some sort of a um, some sort of an Aryan principle. What is called Aryan? Hitler claimed himself to be an Aryan, and um, the, and and his idea was that Aryans came from India, and many people still think Aryans. You know, in India, there is a popular uh, theory as to uh, where different people groups came from, and one of the theories is that one particular very influential people group is Aryan. I don't believe in that based on evidence. I I have I have reasons to think that Aryans uh, originated elsewhere, um, not in India, but came. To India also, but not by name Aryan. Um, so that's one example uh, of a theory which I know to be not true about gypsies. I'm not sure. I haven't done my research. I haven't uh, explored evidence. But um, if I were to go by you know the similar claim of Aryans, I'd like to think that uh, uh, it may not be true. It may be true, may not be true. Uh, it's sort of 50-50 at the moment. Um, so. Um, Supposedly, Krishna was killed by Hunter mistakenly shooting him with a bow arrow. Um, it's sort of, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, um, even um, um, essentially from all available evidence, both uh, the two major myths in India, uh, namely um, Ramayana and Mahabharata, where Bhagavad Gita is a chapter, is really one chapter in uh, Mahabharata. Uh, these two myths are clearly meant to be myths. They clearly have demonstrably mythical content. And uh, from, from every evidence, uh, it would appear that they were meant to be... They are similar to Shakespearean place, you know. They, um, uh, they are um, uh, for entertainment purposes. Uh, to be practiced by some sort of a nomadic people group who were uh, um, who enacted dramas, and because be every, every every evidence points to that, and because of that, one of the important pieces of evidence is that uh, essentially even for these two myths, um, uh, different versions of myths. Uh, brother, no problem. Uh, let's catch up later. God's blessings. Uh, different um, myths, um, uh, sorry, the, the two different uh, myths, there are varying versions of these myths. There's no standard version of this. Uh, these two myths at all. So it depends on what myth you go by. You know, you hear about this, you hear about that, and so on. Um, uh, Sister Charaki Gypsy, how, is, how difficult is it to buy a Bible in India? Um, I've, uh, generally speaking, it should be easy. Generally speaking, um, where I come from, I mean, where, where I come from, uh, there's a huge um, population of Christians. Christians are very influential where I come from, although uh, they are Christians on paper, not, not really proper Christians uh, for varying reasons. 
so clearly where i come from you know you, yeah you can get a bible um, anywhere uh, i i am from south india south india is generally more christian than north india um less persecution and that sort of stuff uh north india is supposed to be less christian um having said that uh of course there there are some very prominent cities in north india which are really you know um reasonably advanced and so on i i, I can't imagine uh finding it hard to you know find a christian book book shop uh, there so i think anywhere you should be able to find but uh, the question would be um, um and i think i think even in your mother tongue because you know like i said there are many many languages in india a few hundreds if not uh, more um i don't know if i think the bible is i think the bible is available in all the major languages but i think there are many many tribal languages you know spoken by only a couple of hundred people and so on uh in which uh, you, you know in those languages translations uh, are happening even as we speak um i know i'm aware of uh translation teams you know doing this and so on so uh so so how easy is it to buy a bible in your mother tongue depending on uh, what language you speak if it's a major language yes no problem if there is if it's a minor language perhaps uh, perhaps it's a uh, still work in progress uh gandhi would gandhi be viewed as a hindu by most indians uh, yes he would be uh, th- this is the point uh but gandhi well, who was gandhi killed by by a hindu by a hindu also because gandhi wasn't a hindu of his own type the guy who killed the gandhi um um uh, killed gandhi because gandhi didn't do a proper service to india um so proper service to hinduism and that's why he actually um very popularly he actually shouted out uh uh saying hey ram and you know calling unto a god a hindu god and uh, he shot him um so uh would he be viewed by most indians as a hindu he would be but a version of a hindu you know uh, th- th- okay maybe another thing that uh, everyone needs to be aware of perhaps uh note carefully most indians have been categorized as hindus most indians wouldn't be aware of many things hindu hindu in their lives apart from maybe going into a temple and you know because they led to think that's their religion beyond that they wouldn't know anything they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't um, know much to uh, even engage in a simple conversation you know abhijit uh, Ab- abhinit or abhijit uh, he showed up and he said something and he couldn't even um, comprehend a basic point that i was making purely because i'm assuming he wouldn't have even read uh, what he claimed he knowed uh, he knew and he believed in um um so the point simply is uh, according to the indian uh, legal system you know the indian legal system allows for religious civil code the criminal code is the same uh, across the board but the civil code depends on your own religion you can choose this is why muslims have their own civil code and they can implement you know like the sharia thing but not the entire of entirety of sharia but some sort of a uh a slim version at least in terms of civil civil issues they can have a their own um, legal system and christians have their own and so on uh, not not necessarily defined in every way you know in you know some specialized aspects and remaining they can always fall back on the common code um and the reason this is important uh, to understand is that in india um a christian is essentially i i let you know how a hindu is defined the way a hindu is defined is in a is in an interesting way and that is why a majority of indians are today hindus unfortunately and the re- and the way it is done is uh, essentially christians are properly defined you know anyone who believes in the bible and jesus to be god and that sort of stuff is a christian anyone who is a buddhist similar in a buddha uh, muslim similar in allah quran and whatever 
um and after defining the other religions it just you know gets to the end and essentially says anyone who is not any one of the previous is a hindu and the reason that is done is just to make sure everyone has a civil code in place you know there's no atheistic civil code there's only religious civil codes in india and so um the sort of the secular or what what could have been an atheist civil code in india is uh, the hindu civil code what is and this this was a quirk in history you know the british were really good in a few different ways in indian history and they were uh, really they got their things wrong in a few different ways and one of the ways is this they thought indians were hindus that's how they saw indians which which unfortunately Uh, meant uh, many many people uh, i'd say even maybe 30% 40% of indians who did not espouse hinduism until that point were categorized hindus and they were over a period of time you know led to believe that they were hindus and so on um they were partly already in uh, you know being uh, they were partly already in in the process of being brainwashed to get to that state but when the british came and the civil code was implemented that sort of nail the uh, that was the last nail in the coffin in terms of that uh, which means you know many would be hindus uh, not because they know hinduism or has espoused understood and taken it up most indians would not have a clue uh, they, they 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 will know the bare minimum we walk into the temple and someone will pray for you and give you some stuff and then you put it on your forehead or whatever and that's it you've got the blessings of god this is pretty much hinduism for maybe if i were to guesstimate maybe 50 60% of indians beyond this they wouldn't have a clue they would know much about rama ramayana much about mahabharata krishna apart from knowing the name and maybe knowing some you know some very minor details which means you can be a hindu but you know someone who is a religious hindu who reads this text may think oh you're not a hindu and that's i think uh, part of the problem for gandhi now for gandhi hinduism is you know i i can read various texts but you know you know uh, that's it that's it i'm a hindu and uh, but beyond that he was really secular in uh, his approach but uh, god say the uh, the guy who killed gandhi uh, killed him because he wasn't hindu enough cool uh, i i'm i'm scrolling back to address uh, to see if there is any question and at some stage maybe i'll come uh, scroll forward in india the sadly there's a proclivity to follow gurus rishis spiritual masters when it comes to choosing the numerous types of hindu teachings osho is a good example of high, highly successful guru uh, bear in mind also uh, that, that is very true uh, that is very true in some way shape or form but bear in mind um that most of these gurus including uh the one that uh, brother houston also mentioned earlier this um uh, sadguru uh, fellow and so on uh most of these we might see as highly successful but not carefully today Uh, the last census that i am aware of of india 1.3 billion now i think it might be 1.7 billion or something people so uh, when it co- when it comes to a few million followers it's a very very negligible community uh, uh gurus including sad the who is called sadguru uh, who by the way <laughs> he he uh, he resides in um, uh in my home state and he is not respected at all in my home state and he's a he's a he's a he's an he's an element of joke there um but he has his few thousand maybe a few couple you know maybe a million you know followers you know offline and online and so on um even though we might see that yeah these are maybe a million people or something it's a very negligent group most of indians wouldn't be concerned with these people at all and the unfortunate my my pain my real pain is this india never india what is today known as india which is a very modern nation 
uh, very new nation there wasn't an india before the british uh, came um um but what is today known as india received the gospel in the first century apostle uh, uh, thomas came there in the first century i'm also told that apostle bartholomew could have been there not entirely sure haven't explored the details uh, historical details but apostle uh, thomas was there uh, in the first century he eventually became a martyr there uh, in the capital of my home state he became a martyr um and apparently you know um, it, the claim is that you know some of his physical remains are um preserved in my home state in a couple of different places and so on um but the problem is uh for the for the given the early uh, time at which the gospel came um to india the gospel did not spread across india purely because from what i can see unfortunately uh, the the complex so social nature of india wasn't appropriately uh, handled or handled by those who in different um, uh, faces brought the gospel to india which meant uh the reach of the gospel wasn't too much the gospel did not spread across the nation uh, not not even uh, by a, not even by a, um, it, it did not go beyond let's say 5% of india it should have spread like wildfire but it did not uh, people were for various reasons uh, one of the important reasons is caste system uh, if you find any indian who is a christian by you please challenge him or her if they follow caste system in any shape or form um and you'd be surprised you know um, to find that uh, even christians very unfortunately uh, take on caste system very very unfortunately quite foolishly i'd say Uh, which meant the uh, gospel didn't spread across the nation um i'd really like to uh, through god's grace for this to change i'd really like india to have one um wave of thorough proclamation of the gospel through god's grace uh, much work to be done um but through god's grace um okay let's see sorry one second i'm uh, i'm s i hear they came out of slavery similar time as jews during time of ex exodus uh if you're talking about uh, the uh the gypsies i'm really not sure um like i said in india from what i know there is no evidence but having said that i haven't done my proper research uh, i'm going by only my anecdotal experience i'd really like to maybe do proper research and maybe comment further maybe later sometime later there's a street preacher in india jabin pillai who attempts to do the preaching of the good news check out his video how indian goons try to stop him um Uh, like i haven't come come across this uh, gentleman but 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 this is the evidence this is what i'm speaking about can you see his name um his last name is a caste name and this is the problem yeah th this is the problem i run into you know across india um you run into this um christians suddenly become so foolish when it come to caste based discussion because they will have they wouldn't have been born again in relation to caste 
they'll hold that on so dearly and i wouldn't believe i can't believe sometimes i wouldn't know whether i should bang my head on the wall when they hold on to cast and you can see that the evidence is here jabin pillai in the name and uh, for for those who are not familiar i i am aware of this cast um uh, pillai is a cast that comes from actually tamil nadu so it's likely is from he is a tamil um in some way shape or form um but this is the problem and it's a, it it is it's not exactly the top tier cast in tamil nadu but it's a, it's a cast with a uh, reasonable clout political financial clout and there are people of this cast who are christians supposedly who go around not wanting to leave the cast behind in my awareness it will not work if you consider i mean with caste system comes an entire baggage caste system is a social hierarchy um it's not uh, like how many others might think it's not some sort of uh, an understanding of tribal grouping not at all not even by a million miles it's a social hierarchy which was clearly which has been clearly enforced in history through hinduism when i say hinduism no <laughs> bear with me carefully i'm using the approximate word the hinduism um and um um it it's not a, it's not a reference to a tribe and therefore it should never have been a last name at all my last name by the way is my father's first name you know th- this is you know my my um my uh, what is uh, what is actually my sort of should i say tribe my extended family grouping that i am aware of uh, when i study the history of mine and there are many such many such uh, across india especially in tamil nadu but across india where people did not care about caste never took up caste stayed away from caste stayed away from even the religion hinduism for a very very long time and became sucked into hinduism only in the recent you know last couple of centuries um and that is why uh, in my uh, family line you would not see a family name as last name but ra- because we never had that you will you will not see a caste name as last name because we never accepted caste system what you will see is uh, my last name is just my father's first name <laughs> that's what you'd find um but this name uh, brother jc if you are aware of him please jabin play if you i don't you know apologies i am even uh, i am even pro- i when i i am when i speak to indians i really you know i you know like how i speak to muslims in my own pe- you know peculiar way when i speak to indians i have my another peculiar mindset i take for example if jabin was standing in front of me i or you know if i'm sitting in front of him or whatever i say hey what's your name jabin what what is that p a l l a i what does that mean where did he get that name from is how i'll approach because i am because i know too much about caste system i am terribly terribly upset especially when a christian has that i go bonkers i do apologize uh, i still of course uh, through god's grace you know um, have my feet on the ground but i take the person to task um and i will do that with jabin so jc i don't know who which jc this is i don't know if you if we if i'm assuming you're not just jc from speaker's corner but uh, if you are aware of uh, jabin pillai jabin jabin uh, please speak uh to him and um, challenge him on this i'd really like him to change his last name it's so severe if he goes with this name and preach uh many people in india will reject the message because they will not want to receive a message from a p i l l a i because they've had enough 
of caste system so jabin can go preach what however much he wants to but if he goes with his name the message will be rejected i can't believe how they don't even know this yet but uh, please if you know uh, jc please uh, challenge him on that um they were not gypsy when they left india it was a development over time possibly not sure but uh, if they were not if they were not gypsy i can't i can't see a reason why they would have left to begin with why would they be nomadic it's not an easy life nomadic life so i i it simply doesn't add up um Uh, the term gypsy comes from egyptians the old folk presume the origin came out of ancient egypt uh yeah you're not sure not sure yeah i'm really not sure our oh, original six mix of indians portuguese defending against muslims no uh indians and portuguese no um Uh, the original sikhs are very interestingly very importantly very, sikhism is by the way is a religion in india it's an artificial religion um it it's a it's a rather a relatively a uh, new religion not that hinduism is very old hinduism is also relatively very new despite the claims otherwise it's relatively very new um sikhism is um, newer than hinduism um and uh, essentially sikhism was uh, born out of the background that there were a group of people who were mainly based in punjab back then in north india this is where you might uh, hear punjabis who are called punjabis who speak this language called punjabi who would most likely be a sikh uh, by religion sikh um they may many times they may have the last name if it's a gentleman sikh singh um s a n g h last name singh and if it's a lady the same last name kaur k a u r there are maybe one or two more such uh, uh, last names they might have um and the religion was born out of um, uh, the awareness that hinduism is wrong in many different ways including in caste system and islam was violent in many different ways so they married the ideas of these two religions and they came up with sikhism essentially one god one god uh and uh, in this religion there is no there is supposed not to have been caste system and this is why essentially at the point when sikhism was introduced uh to demonstrate the fact that they were relinquishing caste system uh they came up with this new invention last name singh so when someone has the last name singh it's supposed to imply that they have relinquished a caste name and they have taken up this non caste last name singh likewise the uh, when it comes to a, f- a female kaur um they are thoroughly indians uh when i say indian bear in mind the construct of this uh, thing called india or indian is very relatively new only a couple of centuries uh, uh, old um so when i say indian i just mean from this land mass which is today called india um and uh, sikhs are pretty much aboriginal uh they were severely persecuted by the way uh during um severely persecuted because they ran into political conflict with um with uh with uh, uh, a few political leaders especially uh s- some people some representatives of uh, uh the sikhs ended up assassinating a sitting prime minister now a few decades ago a popular sitting prime minister very popular sitting prime minister was assassinated uh, by a couple of representatives of uh, uh, sikhism and uh, because of that assassination they were severely the entire community was severely persecuted because essentially the entire community is um, uh, 
took the representatives as genuine representatives and the entire community has some practices which are military in nature they'll carry a weapon and so on you know religiously um this is why sikhs you know even in the western world they are they are allowed to carry some weapons because it's part of their religion but well, many people may not realize what is part of their religion um when they say it's part of their religion actually had a practical purpose you know um in the times past um and so yeah essentially there was severe persecution that's why you have you may you will come across uh, many sikhs across even the western world you know the turban wearing um indians so uh, not a mix between indians and portuguese um there's plenty of portuguese mix in india um you actually if i remember correctly i think there was even um uh someone i came across in our live chat by a portuguese surname who uh came across as someone from india and you would see that a lot um but actually having said that it's not very easy because uh the portuguese uh had a very bad influence on india brother dharan you know he does his research on um, the um the roman catholic um, inquisitions and the portuguese as they had the inquisition in india very sad and um, many people were forced um at some stage when the portuguese had power uh, in a couple of different small uh, areas in india um there was proper violent inquisition in the portuguese controlled areas back then and around that time when the portuguese were in power um many people were baptized into roman catholicism not even knowing what they were baptized into in many situations and uh, many of them took the surnames of the priest who baptized them very unfortunately so that's why you find many people with portuguese surnames in india even if they are completely only indians um uh, so so anyway uh, but uh, just to comment on portuguese uh, uh, history in india none of the above anity <laughs> okay um i have seen a few christian brothers trying to hand out free bibles in the street and hindu mobs gather up against them question them saying yeah absolutely yeah you, you won't be um yeah essentially um like i say vigilante groups it's perfectly legal as a matter of fact uh, if you know anything about the indian you know the indian legal system in the last few decades there have been all, all there have been problems with what is called conversion bills you might have come across this if you're following indian politics indian legal system but in reality in india you cannot implement a con- anti conversion bill you can't because india technically has a freedom of uh, free, free, uh, right to religion a freedom of religion or right to religion which means people can convert Uh, and so there cannot be a bill that can go through the parliament but what is popularly called um, anti conversion bill in technical in technical terms will not be act anti conversion bill but anti forced conversion bill because many times indians will interpret any conversion as a matter of fact to be forced you know they say hey, you gave this to them and that's why they became christians and they will speak on behalf you know like what's happening with the gazans today as you can see you know israel gaza conflict not many gazans are speaking out i don't know if you notice this not many gazans will be speaking very few will be speaking out god knows what is going through their minds but many muslims will speak on their behalf from across the world because they don't have any pain and so they'll speak for as long and keep the war going for as long when the people on the ground are suffering um where well, maybe they don't like the war many of them but unfortunately they don't have autonomy to speak out and that's how islam has made things and there's also one more historical detail we won't get into that now um likewise um um i can't remember why i made the point but uh yeah vigilante groups uh, will uh, 
yeah yeah sorry when when christ when supposed conversions happen when people accuse uh, that a forced conversion has happened very rarely would the one who actually converted will stand up and say no 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 it wasn't forced i voluntarily took it i voluntarily converted many for the fake for the sake of fear will you know go with the flow and you know relinquish jesus and so on and thereby uh, you know making the christian also suffer because it'll be demonstrated as a forced conversion but beyond in other words um, all that to say in india according to the constitution which is by the way in serious jeopardy because you know this uh, hindu nationalist government has been in power by a huge margin two times now and they will be in power it seems like one more time and they are they are very strategically operating in many different ways and that's why you f- you find the temple being built just now they could have built the temple a long time ago which they did not they built that just now because they want to win one more election using that temple alone they will win one more election and they'll do one more thing to win one more election that's how they are doing things from uh, what we can see uh, so it's a uh, hard by by my my point was going to be there is nothing standing between them and the constitution because of the enormous margins by which they are winning despite the fact that most people can actually be turned away from them they have been deluded into thinking they are hindus because the opposition is poor and um unfortunately you know um they are not getting proper advice uh, i don't think they are going to win this time also from all that i can see but the opposition leader uh, leaders see think that they are going to win and i think they are deluded it's not going to happen from what i see well i'll be glad if i'm wrong but the point simply is um, if the constitution is changed then there is nothing changing india from losing even on paper the religious freedom that it was supposed to have and so it's a it's an urgent issue to de- to um take care of i have a few things in mind you know um in relation to um dealing with uh, what is a very serious uh, very very real jeopardy the religious freedom um i'd really like to you know uh, engage on a couple of different projects in this uh, in this regard um but uh, currently haven't got the funds and so on so uh, a little bit uh, uh, you know um, working behind the hood and through god's grace you know but in any case of course uh, working on islamic polemics at the moment roman catholic and uh, such polemics at the moment once we get these uh, you know i must i'm i'm from what i can see next few months uh, busy with these things once this is stable then uh, need to take care of the religious climate in india uh, the indian religions uh, because all evidence is firmly in support to destroy the popular narrations in india and that is the key part india wasn't hindu originally and every evidence points to that archaeological um so anyway so that's a long story there fg are there any issues when a hindu who accepts jesus is baptized in church in tamil nadu i mean freedom of religion today in tamil nadu uh, like i said i mean if if the person stands up and says yes i did become a christian then there is no issue because on paper legally no one can stand against you uh, but uh, in tamil nadu especially in tamil nadu by the way i, I don't know if you know Tamil Nadu which is where i come from is a is a graveyard from for hindu nationalism is a graveyard is a graveyard for many many hindu things tamil nadu is today hindu and by that what i mean is it for it it follows some form of hinduism which i can only describe as some sort of a secular hinduism should we say they don't they the tamil nadu actually is a safe ground relatively for supposed to be for christians and um, muslims and other people people of other religions um so uh, other issues with uh, so currently there isn't um currently there is an issue so with with the current tamil nadu there is no issue 
but the tamil nadu which was you know uh, until you know in the previous uh, under previous rulership uh was a little bit different but the people have the same tendency um as long as it's not forced they don't mind because on paper it's fine um but if 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 people get and there but there are some religious hindus in tamil nadu too except not with politic not with significant political leverage um like i said pillai pillai the last name that uh, is a is a prominent uh, uh, hindu uh, caste um in this regard also that's why i'm a bit surprised and uh, but i'm uh, actually i'm not too surprised that uh, even a prominent uh, evangelist still holds that name indian christians need a proper either proper education or a little bit of a whack you know um, um to get their act together okay uh, so okay uh, but when when same thing is done by hindus giving away by, yeah yeah absolutely i mean they they'll force you to say you know you know like like how a muslim would force you given a chance they can force you to recite the shahada a hindu would you know I, although this doesn't mean much a hindu not every hindu is like this most hindus are not like this and that is the key point to understand the persecution from the religious uh, hindu nationalists is from a very small minority but state sponsored these days um and they'll force people to say jai shri ram you know uh, but not 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 in not not thinking that they've converted the person into hinduism or anything but that they have subjugated them so um, yeah so that's very true uh, absolutely uh, brother who's done that is very true uh to get a different civil co- court of course they need to demonstrate by the way you can't you can't you can't uh, when when you choose a particular when when you when you declare your religion to be something for to uh, something you know um uh which has implications M- most of the times people may not even know the details that this the 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 there is the implication of the different treatment in terms of civil code except when it comes to someone passing away you know when you when when you inherit property the hindu civil code is different from the uh, uh, christian civil code in relation to de- to in, to uh, to allowing who a uh, legal heir is uh, so that's the only time they'll get to know this there are many other d- differences but they will not, most of the times they won't even know about this because you know they won't run into um run into them um so but yeah uh, but but when you do declare yourself to be a christian you know um essentially you need to demonstrate you need to demonstrate uh through some sort of documentation cool um yeah interesting absolutely yeah the the the, the there is a group of uh, court and court christians today who are again you know uh, i'd like to think that you know they're good christians uh, but uh, but there are good christians in that group um, the group is called mar thoma mar m a r m mike alpha romeo m a r uh thomas without the end s the s at the end thoma um so you have that group uh, which uh, which um traces its origin to the ministry of uh, thomas uh sister sona good to see you good morning uh, good to see you is islamic kaaba rock uh, shivalingam gems rocks um um interesting point um very interesting point is kaaba shivalingam no kaaba from what it appears um uh, is from a feminine cult moon worship by the way the ancient moon worship is a feminine worship system 
the ancient sun worship system will be masculine in one in one way in 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 some other ways it'll be the other way around also uh, but uh, uh, which means um the um uh, kaaba is uh, you know of course uh, um the the what you have there is uh, the female you know um uh, sexual part whereas uh, the lingam is the male sexual part so the shiva lingam is um, is akin to uh, what is called cleopatra's needle which is in london uh, which is again akin to various uh, in um, in babylonian sumerian mythology and egyptian mythology the male uh, uh, sexual part yeah, sona chris say south indian churches of caste this is absolutely phenomenal i i mean at some stage you know if you if you if you see me by the way my brothers and sisters if at some stage if you see me cause a huge problem against the top leader in what is supposed to be a a protestant group denomination i i won't i'm a little bit you know double hearted at the moment i i i think i i won't name him yet he is the chairman the chair person in the committee of a prominent protestant group which has millions of people across the globe which is very prominent in the us very stable doctrine but he is the chairman and i personally i don't know him as uh, in person but i know his family um from a little bit of a distance i i am a close friend with someone who is a very close friend oh close associate former associate of that family and he is a caste maniac he'll come across us all flowery and stuff to an extent he is now a chairman for a global movement which is headquartered in the us he is an indian bloke he is still in india but he is a chairman there purely because uh, you know um, of the clout of uh, that denomination in india also apart from the us but i know him but that's just to give you one example um i seldom i have very little respect you know of course you know frank might still be watching uh, maybe there are others uh, you know roman catholics and so on who are watching so far you've only seen him, you know us uh, commenting about um, roman catholicism eastern orthodoxy and so on purely because you've got the theory wrong uh, the um, biblical christians have got the theory right but in the in the case of the gentleman i have in mind and many other similar leaders in uh, south india their practice is wrong they are absolutely phenomenally caste centered people and i'm sure you know they won't end up in a good place in eternity from what i can see um uh, knowing what they know they should have relinquished the caste system a long long time ago, time ago but they refused to do it and um they are holding on to it for many um uh, centuries um pray for the untouchables uh, absolutely i mean um, you wouldn't believe uh, you would not believe how open many people in india are to the gospel but what is a huge hindrance for them is the caste system they look at the caste system and they stay away they like jesus but they stay away not that they know jesus historically not that they are, that they understand the sin you know understand sin and everything else properly but because they are very open if not for the caste system um, i know of uh, leaders of uh, un, you know different untouchable groups taking droves of people out of hinduism on to other religions such as buddhism but they don't bring them to christianity because they see caste system here too they are very open to learn about god very very open and of course you know um, as long as you learn about jesus christ for a reasonable period of time let's say a few months you will fall in love with him and understand him to be god and so on um 
Yeah, yes, Sona. Unfortunately, I haven't been around at Speakers Corner uh, for a couple of different technical reasons. I wasn't able to be there. Um, but uh, I'm hoping to be there, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, apologies. Uh, but uh, it would have been lovely to have, a, have had a deeper, longer conversation with uh, him. He came across, you know, I, I saw the brief interaction that uh, Chris had with Sneeko. And uh, at least in that interaction, he came across genuine i'm not sure about the overall um sort of you know demeanor of him because clearly he's an also in a you know peer pressure environment but it would have been lovely but you know through god's grace you know um let's see um show sure, recorded evidence Yes, uh, Kerala, Kerala and Tamil Nadu together. Apostle Thomas landed in Kerala, what is today called Kerala. And then he, Kerala and Tamil Nadu are the two southernmost states of India. Kerala is the western one-fourth and Tamil Nadu is roughly uh, is the uh, eastern three-fourths of you know, bottom-most you know, uh, tier, uh, southernmost tier. Um, uh, Thomas ended, uh, landed in Kerala because there were plenty of Jews back then in the first century. And there are still, there are still Jewish uh, uh, people who are Jews, you know, traceable Jews who are there uh, with the uh, Jewish religious system. Thomas uh, primarily, from what I understand, actually came there to share the gospel with them first. Um, and of course, uh, but he ended up uh, traveling a little bit more and uh, communi communicating the gospel. The initial church there wasn't Catholic, clearly, because Cat Catholicism wasn't around in the first few centuries. So uh, when Thomas came, this is why they are Mar Thoma. They, they're not, they don't call themselves Catholic, Roman Catholic. Um, they, they are one evidence point of the fact that Catholicism did not, Roman Catholicism did not exist in the first century. Uh, but anyway. Um, Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, but um, uh, of course, a uh, caste system is much more than uh, slave slavery. The only reason, from what I, I would actually rate, by uh, by all means, in terms of my evaluation, slavery, the transatlantic slave trade, is the worst thing that happened in human history, from what I can see. Uh, at least in the last, uh, let's say, a uh, few centuries. But but can I please suggest the caste system in, in India actually goes one step more than that, but it doesn't get enough um, attention purely because it's local to India. Um, when I say local to India, actually caste system in some shape or form actually exists in many uh, South Asian uh, countries. But of course, India is the home turf uh, for it. Um, uh, so in a way, it's local because you know only in Hin India Hinduism is uh, prominent. In the, in you know places such as Thailand and so on, not many even talk about their religions in terms of you know it's not known much across the world. So that's the problem we have. Could be from Kerala to uh, essentially um, the name yeah, the la that particular last name is Tamil. Uh, but the Tamils uh, who have this last name, the Tamils from this particular caste, which is, by the way, not a tribe, but they don't even know this. They don't even want to know this. They don't even recognize this and so on, um, are spread around. Uh, you will find uh, many with this last name in Sri Lanka also today. Many Sri Lankan Tamils will actually be of this particular caste. Um, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is uh, to understand caste system a little bit more. Um, absolutely, yeah. India, Indian system. I mean, it's 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 phenomenal. I don't know how many of you are from the US. It's phenomenal how um, what's his name? Uh, the the Republican uh, candidate who, of course, uh, did not end up in the, he he ended up uh, um. um Suspending his campaign. What's that gentleman's name? I forget. A Republican. Um, the 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 Indian ethnic Indian uh, Vivek Ramasamy. Uh, Vivek Ramasamy um, again uh, comes from Tamil Nadu ethnically, 
comes from Tamil Nadu, Ramasamy. You know, this is why you see my name, Belu Sami, Sami, Ramasamy. Um, uh, comes from Tamil Nadu, but I couldn't believe, he, you know, he even had the run that he had. Because uh, Indian, you know, Indian religions, um, Indian religion is so horrible that no one should even be talking about Indian, you know, being a Hindu and then, you know, standing in an election. It should be a matter of shame. But of course, in India, in uh, in the US, it wasn't um, um, clearly people are unaware and therefore they did not take this seriously. And of course, people like uh, David Wood and so on aren't doing a good uh, service by, you know, um, acknowledging Hinduism to be some sort of a reasonable system in the face of Islam, which I think is a very, very wrong thing to do historically um, and so on. But um, Vivek Ramaswamy, I'm, 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 I'm glad that he didn't, uh, um, he didn't, um, he couldn't uh, actually become the candidate. I'm really glad. Uh, not, not that I have anything against the person, the gentleman, lovely man as he is. He clearly, maybe he doesn't understand much about his religion. He thinks, you know, uh, he his cultural values are the same as Christian cultural values, Judeo-Christian. I saw a few videos in, in a few videos, him saying that, but I really wanted to actually, you know, um, engage with him and, you know, ask him, what are you talking about? Do you even know what you're talking about sort of stuff, you know? Uh, cool. Do Hindus and uh, Sikhs get along? I wonder. They do. Sikhs get along, you know, with um, with uh, anyone. Uh, Hindus get along, by the way. Hindus, by the way, when we, when we speak about normal Hindus, unless we're talking about the uh, um, nationalistic Okay, we need to be careful here. Today, most of India actually supports the nationalistic Hindu group in politics. Very unfortunately. Now, it is purely because of bad political maneuvering from the opposition and very cunning political maneuvering from the Hindu nationalist. But if they are allowed to remain in power in another five years, ten years, they will make even the the docile Hindu to be a religious nutter. They are very capable of doing it. They have got the funds and everything else. And they've got the religious, uh, you know, um, acumen, which is really not acumen, but, you know, for lack of a better word, let's say acumen. Uh, but um, before that indoctrination happens, uh, a typical Hindu and a typical Sikh would get along, which is the case to today. Most Hindus would get along with most Sikhs. A very small minority will have a problem, and the minority is a loud minority. They are like you know they are really loud, and they have state sponsorship today, directly or indirectly. And um, yeah, so uh, borrowing the best, uh, or borrowing the worst. Uh, I'm not sure, Brother Houston, um, what the context was. Uh, apologies. Uh, maybe uh, clarify if. Uh, uh, Brother Simon, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd really like to put that to use properly uh, because uh, this is an area of polemics that. Uh, um, I think um, there is some significant contribution I can make, especially from bottom up, first prin principles up, you know, archaeology, history and so on. I know there are a couple of groups which, uh, which are doing a sort of smaller scale uh, polemics, but, uh, but they're not challenging fundamental assumptions. And so I'm really looking forward to that, but uh, through God's grace. Um, And not not entirely sure where why you would come to that conclusion, uh, Shwelebe, but uh, because uh, Mamluks are, from what I understand from Egypt, um, I don't I don't think from from my awareness of uh, uh, Punjabis, uh, I Punjabis are Punjabi as a language. You know, in many of these groups, uh, the very interesting thing is um, the language is a strong indicator of the grouping of people. Uh, because uh, you know many 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 people groups in India have a very strong affinity to their language. If you speak to a typ typical Tamil, you know the language Tamil, Tamil. The language Tamil is, by the way, very good. 
you know but um, i stop at saying it's very good purely because i am a christian and i don't want to i don't want anything to take, take the place of god but you know um, but uh, if if you talk to any non christian tamil you know they'll they'll have much more uh, praise for the language people you know long story short uh the language indicates ethnic um sort of uh eth- eth- ethnic uh should i say tendency maybe not but ethnic grouping also to a great degree and punjabis who are the six are punjabis and they speak a particular language nothing to do with um, the language is uh, uh mostly hindi like uh, but a variant of that and um they have been speaking this language for a very long time i can't see why they would be egyptian um matrisa Mat- Mat- matrisa pan i i wonder is that your real name though cuz you you did i th- i think you did mention that you are a tamil tamil if i remember correctly um but clearly your name is in tamil and you are uh you are referring to many tamil based details mail marwatu raman was worshiped by fam- my family sadly or really very, very very sad absolutely sad went on numerous pilgrimages there the man they call amma same demonic yes really really sad well yeah it's really really sad i mean clearly anyway through god's grace uh you did uh, please please uh try and see if you are able to we can have a private conversation with them if that could suit because i remember you mentioning that uh, you'd like uh, your parents to have a conversation with me but uh, yeah a private conversation if you prefer uh, we have to pray for them to deliver absolutely christianity is supposed to be the opposite of caste absolutely absolutely if anyone had understood the message of jesus christ uh, properly they should have gone against caste system like anything and guess what if only they had done that they would have been received by a large part of india you would not believe brother houston strategically um strategically opposing caste system is very very important and only christianity can do it none of the other religions can do it because only in jesus we have strong theological grounds to do it um and so and when you do it there is a large portion of uh, indian population who for that very for that one reason for that singular reason would want to you know take sit and learn christianity for a year and they'll do that as a favor for us of course you know you can't become a christian without a conviction of sin but if they want to sit and learn it's it's a it's a good place to start and this is the this is the thing and i can i yeah um the true god says true god says what does indian government do with tax money they collect from hindu temples and do they also collect tax from christian churches in india um not from um 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 well you say the indian government actually uh not the indian government um uh tax from temples i haven't done my full research but i am but in my knowledge tax from temples are not collected at the central level not the, not by the central government it's collected only by the states and not in every state not in every state in my state they collect tax from the temple but i in my awareness not in every state um, and they do not do that with uh, uh, with any other religious uh, group so with with christians they don't uh, collect from churches and not with muslims and so on and the reason is very simple the reason is very simple uh, temples um where historically government property and i'm when i say government i'm talking not just with the modern government you know british plus uh uh period i'm even talking i'm talking about uh, hundreds of years you know beginning with the first millennia um beginning with around 600 ad or so uh, temples were um 
So that's when temples uh, began to be built. The earliest of Hindu temples you won't find pre-Christ at all. At all. There's no evidence whatsoever. Across India, you can go anywhere you won't find. And the temples were built and uh, they were built as government kings. You know, many, many uh, kingdoms uh, sponsored the construction as a government project. And that is why they were built. There were many of them built because these were huge monumental projects at a monumental cost. Uh, individuals couldn't have done it. Only governments could do. And by governments, I mean kingdoms of that time and kingdoms did sponsor. And because it was historically kingdoms which sponsored the buildings, it never belonged to the, uh, you know, the locality. Uh, it never did. And that is why some go state governments, which are sensible, like the Tamil Nadu government, actually says, hey, you know what? This was never your property, the buildings. And these are huge revenue generating means uh, purely because they exist. You know, bear in mind in, uh, in Hindu worship system, at least in the temple based worship system, uh, people aren't coming to a God who is up there, but a God who is there inside the room. And the room didn't always belong to the government. And so, um, uh, yeah, that's the rationale and uh, not from uh, churches in India. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, surely be, uh, I'll be very interested in uh, receiving more information. Absolutely. If you, yeah. Absolutely, more information uh, is most welcome. If you if you if you can email, that'll be lovely. Uh, 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 absolutely, uh, brother Matriso. Looking forward. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't believe you would, uh, brother Houston. Sorry, I'm I'm going on a rant, uh, brother Darren. I'm apologize here. Yeah going on a rant but uh, hopefully uh, we can wrap this up soon um but uh, brother houston you would not believe you simply would not believe how who are supposed to be biblical christians especially where i come from will do anything and everything to even claim that caste system is valid even based on the bible you would not believe and the way they have gotten away with that sort of claim is by, by a simple historical quirk. And that was very unfortunately, the earliest of Bible translators in my mother tongue, Tamil, the earliest of them belonged to this Hindu priestly order. And some of them actually weren't even Christians. Uh, but because they were, because they were, um, because they were close to the um, the uh, sort of the political elite, they had access to these projects. And unfortunately, one of the quirks from that is that what was tribe in the Bible, what was tribe or sub-tribe in the Bible, they translated as the word that corresponds to caste, which is a historical quirk. Um, so, for example, uh, being you know, you can be you can be from one of the twelve tribes, and these Christi supposed Christian leaders, who are by the way supposed to have been you know, they, like I said, one of them is a chairperson of a worldwide you know um, very a very prominent name of a biblical group. I don't want to name yet. I want to carefully consider, you know, how I want to do this and so on and later maybe reveal. But um, including him, I mean, these are Bible, these are people who administer Bible colleges um, across the world, especially in the US. How can he claim this to be the case? I wouldn't, I can't believe. A tribe, is a group which is a large family. You know, you can trace your origin back to this one couple. But a caste, anyone from a caste cannot do it. 
none of them can and so uh, why they would do they haven't got a clue but the point is um they justify they it's not just that they uh, you know um they are caste conscious they implement caste they would not marry outside their caste they are very very caste hungry evil wicked um but they'll get away uh with their caste uh, ideas um so um, i've emailed before regarding uh, querying a tamil apologies uh, brother i don't know if i missed your email not sure which email uh, i am i am okay um uh matris matriso uh, or matrico i don't know how how you pronounce your name uh, my i i i constantly watch info team operations team.org brother greg has his uh, greg um uh, at operations team.org um the other brothers will soon have their own emails but um the team email is team at operations team.org not sure i don't remember receiving an email uh, at info at operations team.org uh, for a tamil bible although uh, um i could have missed it apologies mathulan okay yeah okay completely understandable because that that is uh, that is um uh, mathulan i can i can i can see that to be a tamil name Uh, but thank you very much everyone apologies for that long session uh, brother darren apologies uh, shwela b says mamluks in egypt overthrew their slave masters that's why muslims from turkey came back down to war with mamluk dynasty in egypt okay understood yeah yeah but uh, i i okay, i think i think roughly my i completely understand i i maybe want to read up a little bit more on where they exactly come from uh, but um um but uh yeah i'll be keen uh, like i said i mean punjabis have their lang- language punjabi which has been spoken for a long time and it's a derivative of uh, not a derivative but uh, fa- it belongs to the family of uh, what are called um, the north indian languages uh, so we'll be uh, interested to get more details um, but uh, having said that let's uh, maybe wrap this up here and uh, through god's grace you know follow up any further comments uh, on a different session but uh, brother mat it'll be lovely to he- get your email uh, apologies for not having responded to a previous email but if you could email that'll be lovely um and we can follow up on that um thank you very much brother darren could you are you still around yeah Yeah, I'm here Aro. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um Amen. Absolutely. Brother Darren, would you mind uh, closing us in prayer? Closing the session in prayer right now. Uh, yeah, amen. I can do that. Heavenly Father, praise you. Lord. Thank you, Father God, because your grace is sufficient for us. And we're at a significant the most significant part of the year, Lord, in the Christian calendar. Yes Lord a time where by Lord you lay down your very life for us at Calvary Lord we took we took two extensive looks tonight at Islam and Hinduism and paganism in in relation to their their takes Lord on what could be considered reality or how they compare to the Bible Lord and you know your offering for us at Calvary in particular just to look at Islam lord and to look at the Quran we're reminded that the passover lamb and the passover event is missing from the Quran lord despite the Quran mentioning Moses 135 times and mentioning Moses confrontations with Pharaoh 27 times in the first 89 of its 114 chapters Not even once in the Exodus saga accounted in the Quran is there any mention of the Passover. The Passover lamb is a picture of the task and process to bring us back to you, Lord. When we could become complete and man could be reconciled to God and Jesus could be our Passover lamb. Lord, we're reminded even for the Passover 
that the salvation of the Israelites wasn't because they were righteous or could be saved by their own works. But Father God, you had already from the fall of Adam had a plan in mind to redeem humanity, a fallen, broken humanity, Lord. Lord, we see from Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. We don't have a God or a triune Godhead at odds with themselves, Lord. And this is the reality that we want to bring to those that are listening to tonight, that they can grasp these fundamentals of biblical truth and understand the complete and eternal atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ on and at Calvary. Lord, you took that pain and that punishment for us. You know, Lord, even the high priest himself said, he prophesied, Lord, that it might be better <coughs> that you would be killed and the, and the Jewish nation might be spared than the Romans would come and take away the Jewish kingdom. But in the end, Lord, the Jews, through the zealots, revolted. They didn't necessarily believe on you and James was killed at an illegal convening of the Sanhedrin they no longer had unfortunately Lord somebody full of the Holy Spirit to consult and because of that Lord we've seen turmoil in the land of Israel Lord you said that, that you are the good shepherd and that your sheep know you yes Lord and will hear your voice Lord help us to hear your voice truthfully in absolute crystal clear, high definition clarity for what you're speaking to our lives, Lord, for salvation. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, verse 27, and as it, as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that will come the judgment. Help us, Lord, to make a surer choice in you for our salvation, atonement, and true repentance. In Jesus' yes. name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Dan. Uh, thank you, everyone, who is uh, who has uh, accompanied us um, right throughout the day. Um, God's blessings to you all. Um, and we shall see tomorrow. Uh, Brother Ray's live stream. Hopefully, he'll feel better tomorrow. God's blessings to everyone. Um, good night. Uh, the various brothers and sisters uh, online and bye-bye. Uh,